that's so exciting and it's so amazingly attractive. Yeah, you're not laughing now, are you? I am not laughing now. What a, hello? What, what a palaver. Not, shouldn't we be taking it out on you? What is that soft focus? What is this? Hi. <laughs> I want to talk to you about the baby Jesus. <laughs> ah. You know what? Today, oh Lord, it is quarter to four in the morning. But, but, you've all been very generous over the last few streams. Man of my word. Um, yeah. So, yes, I did wake up at 11 o'clock this morning, start work, finish at 2 o'clock. <laughs> when you're in e-commerce, this is the worst time to be alive. Now, I know other people have got problems. Why am I so low? Why is my head so small? This is why I had problems. I tried to, I want, I want to be like that so you can see me. Well, I literally, is that how you do it? You just move forward. <laughs> Maybe that's the that's the trick. Hang on. It might that might have just been it. I'm just too far away. <laughs> that's amazing. I've only been doing it seven years. Not really though. It's not not right, is it? I mean, that's. Have I ever streamed like that? I was, I've been like that. I think maybe my hat was made me feel. Just feels a bit like. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do, people. I love it. Here's the thing. Every time I get like this, I say to myself, "What I'll do when I finish the stream." I feel like I'm sitting on a children's seat. That's about right, isn't it? That's not so good. <laughs> Does that matter? Can you still hear me? Do I have to talk over here? You might have noticed I've put a decorative crammer on the back of the seat. Just trying to <clears throat> just trying to up the, the class of the, the the overall show. Um not much to offer. Let's see if the old man wants to come in. I don't even know if he's here. I don't know if anyone's here. I can't see. It's all gone very wrong. But we'll pull something out of the bag. No, oh, massive, massive thank you. Oh, I've got the thing telling me my internet's a bit. That would be nice if I just go in a minute. If I do, I'll come back. But it's telling. Oh no, it's going back up. Oh, it's teasing me. Um, come on, what I was saying. <clears throat> right. Um, what did I just put in the comment? Is that what you want? No, that's just a link to. That's the wrong thing. No, there you go, Packer. If you're here, Packer, you want to come here, he is. Sweet. Help us out, mate. I'm having all sorts of trouble. Hello. <laughs> yeah. For I people who don't know, we, yeah, look, so you've got it. So, well, I'm quite a similar, though. You've zoomed in a bit to rub it in, haven't you? No, I'm just sat forward. Yeah, back usually I can see the side of your armchair. You thought, look, I'll do it. I'll show him. And you've just quickly got... I ain't zoomed it in, honestly. I wouldn't know how. <laughs> All right, look at me with a straight face. No. All right, I'll give it to you this time. No, don't do that. When people who wear glasses all the time take them off, it makes me feel weird. They look like their own granddad or something. How are you, Grandad? I'm all right. How are you? Quite stressed, actually. Life's... I've got a question for you. Oh, you didn't want the answer to the first one, but you've you're got quite stressed. One. You're going to get there, though, aren't you? But I've got a question for you before I forget. All right, let's go. What's the difference between a wafer and a pin? Do you actually want me to consider it, or do you just want me to go for the joke? No, no, it's not a joke. I want you to consider it. Oh, okay. Um... A wafer and a pin. I'm talking about locks. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I can tell you that easy. Well, a wafer lock. In right, it'll be easier to tell you from a pin cylinder, I know which pin most is. people will call a Yale lock, which it isn't. Thanks for the donation, Anglo. I will go through all of those in a bit. I tend to do them in little chunks these days. 
because you have been very generous hence my three streams four streams in the last six days uh but i've i've, I've got hold of <laughs> i've just read it as well i'll read all those out in a minute entropy should be up and running i'll put the link up there oh hang on what what the fuck? how do i watch my own show <laughs> Hang on, people. Let me just get entry sorted out. Yeah, this has been a disaster, but we'll be all right. We'll be all right. We can, we can muscle on. I mean, I know it's a, quite a weird time in the UK, isn't it? There you go. Entropy's up and running if anyone wants to save my life that way. Um, so a pin cylinder is made up of pin stacks, usually yeah. two pins in each stack. And there's a gap in those pins. So there's two pins, one sitting on top of the other. There are the occasions where there's three for master locks and all sorts of different things. But basically, there's two pins. The bit in the middle of the lock we call the core. When you put the key in, because the pins, because the six or five, five or six pin stacks, the pins are different lengths. So that bit where they meet is different heights, causing the you can't turn the core of the lock when you put the when you can't turn it if you put a stick in it because there's those pins there are, it's called the shear line where where the core meets the housing but the key when you put that in it lifts those different pin stacks up and down so they are so the split in all the stacks is on that shear line which is on the break between the housing and the core so then the core can turn wafers are a bit different wafers are circular what i'm going to do for you and what what we're really doing here is you're getting a preview of the lock picking legend stream that thank you you've signed up thank you mate much appreciated um <laughs> that's I'm why i'm so sure interested i tell you what it, i think a lot of the scrubs will go there for a laugh but i do weirdly i'm well known in that industry you know well known as a lock picker I, I invented the using dampeners on bump keys whoa <laughs> let me show you i'll show you because <coughs> you've got pins you've got pin locks you've got wafer locks you've got lever locks there's as many different types of uh of locks um what you really want on your front door is a standard pin cylinder and a five lever curtain this lock. That's probably the best bet. But thieves don't use locks. Do you know what I mean? Thieves don't use lock picks either. Oh. That's all nonsense. Um, let me just find the playlist. I can I can literally show you the inside of a wafer lock. I'm just gonna just going to find you the right one and then and then you'll know the difference immediately yeah right, i've got another it. question while you're finding that then i've got it i've got it you bastard okay i don't know why that made you a bastard you're getting the you're getting the uh audience fear haven't you hey. you're thinking you've asked a question that's caused them to get bored here yeah, have a check i'll shut up and you can no. have a watch <laughs> me fiddling around with a a fold HU101 car lock. Here we go. The forest diamonds get Let me know you can hear it. This is our man, my lock picking we channel. We will fight those locks in Valhalla. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get on with this. God. I'm battling a bit with the rain, so you might have a bit of background noise. But this is a Ford HU101 car door wafer lock. I'll and what I'm going to do back, is so show you, get, we get you the this being picked, this cross section of the HU101 with a leashy gated notch. So it's pulling the wafers, all of them, out. Back up. See that black bit? Yes, mate. That's your wafer. And there's about, what, in an HU101, I think there's seven of those. And they, the key will move all of those. It will pull them down or lift them up because they're sprung to to the right. Um, if you look at that black bit at the top. So see that, that black bit at the top will drop into the barrel. There you go. And once right. they've done that, 
it will turn and i'll get oh, you to that. that very bit hang on yeah well i'm, I'm demonstrating a tool so it's not I'm not demonstrating a lot but it's about 20 minutes let me show you that again push down on that part so that i'm picking that at the moment see yeah. See, I pulled yeah, that no, wafer no, out, and then it allowed me to turn it. Pushing up and down on the pit. Now there's right, only take the leash. Yeah. There's only one wafer in that lock because I've cut it in half, so you can see how it works. If there was six more on the um, on the lock picking legend live stream, and I really want to thank the scrubs who've signed up. It is two ninety nine. You are, you've only got to do a month because once I've got one show, once they see that it'll be entertaining. They think it's going to, no one in the lockpicking scene does live streams. No one. And there's plenty of lockpicking channels. So they think it's going to be my hands going, if you have a look at this Yale 1652 with sliders, we can get a multi pick, part number 024. Insert, pass the wall in, ignoring the scorpions for now. For two hours, no one's paying for that. That you need to pay someone else for that. But once I cut, I'm not going to be on it because then it would just be this. But once it comes on with Lucy Pinder going <laughs> and my voice going, Here we go, you dirty lock picking bastards. Chuck the misses out. It's time to get like blokes. They're, they're not going to know what's hit them. And then it's going to be superb. So once I've done the first member stream, we've, uh, there's so many stuff to join. It's amazing. Brad's here. Hello, Brad. Brad signed up to it. Oh, sorry. I don't mean to lock picking tops people. But um, once I've done the stream, that will be then available for the people who watch the channel. They'll watch it. My guess is they'll sign up for the next one. They just don't know what they're buying because they've not seen it before. So you've helped us out no end. Jewels says, howdy, Chris and Scrubs. Pleasure to catch you live. Big love. How do you feel about that, Pack? I didn't get a minute. Oh, you're a scrub, aren't you? Yeah. Packer, do you want me to do something that's quite intense to you? Oh, if you, if, yeah, go on. If you want. I'll just duck out if I don't like it. <laughs> All right, let me, let me say this to you. If you wanted to write something that was funny, what would you? What sort of mood would you get into to write that scene? Or if you, even if you didn't have, you didn't even have an idea for a story or anything, you just wanted to write something funny. How would you approach it mentally? I'd have no idea, Chris. Not a writer, well, am I? Barely yeah. even read it. Well, I suppose no, I'd have to be in, a, in, a, in a in a pleasant light-hearted funny mood yeah. um but really though you'd need to find it funny you know you're going to struggle to be creative there are people who, who do it though like that the people who are very serious like right i know how to write funny pull back and reveal that's it set piece blah 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 there's a, they're called plotters in the writing world the others are called panzers panzers Pantsers. Can you guess why? You can, can't you? They don't plot. They go by the seat of their pants. And right. that's what I am. I don't plot. I didn't plot my novel. I just wrote it. And it told me what it was. And I learned about it. It's, it's hard to explain. But if you're going to write something funny, you need to be... You need to find it funny, really. Hello, ultra mega Essex boy. Yeah, is this is this is this um <laughs> JP says pansies. Nah, you know. Um, is this timed itself well for you? It's four in the morning here. So has this turned out nice for you? Brad You're says you don't write something funny. That's how you write something funny. Whoa, he's gone zen on it. Thanks. Another super chat's come in. I will deal with them. They keep me head above water. Much I know, Caprishanata Tutu. Um, Packer, I've got a new bit of Italian I want to teach the scrubs, and maybe you can give it the first go. The, the word is frustrato. 
What do you reckon? Pastrano. Yeah. What does it mean? Yeah. It's, well, I'll give um, you. I'll give you an example. There was people in the supermarket pissing about, like making jokes with the checkout girl, and I was in a hurry. It was very frustrato. <laughs> Go on. What do you reckon? This isn't a joke. Yeah, it sounds. Well, it sounds like a. It sounds like a, what, you do. You do Italian like the old boy does French, don't you? Really? Hey, don't just. <laughs> I'm teaching Italian slowly but surely. It means frustrating. Go on. In a way, you're being quite frustrato now. You see, this is your third time as a co-host, and you're already getting a little bit above yourself. I didn't think I'd see that in you. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do that thing on you. I'll wait until someone else comes on who I can. I don't think it. I don't think you'd like it. Well, that's you know really said, going to encourage other people to come on now, isn't it? You know, you know, you said you'll duck out if you don't like it. I reckon we'll get two steps into it, and you'll go, "Nah, nah, you got the wrong bloke." <laughs> and you'll be right, and that's fair enough. I'm actually making a video about it, so I should probably not let the cat out of the bag. Anyway, let's get some bastards on. Um, I, as much as I appreciate loads of pants jokes, uh, Lara spelt it wrong. Amazing. <laughs> flying by the seat of flying by the seat odd their pants. That's a Freudian slip packer. Yeah. Odd pants, Loomy thinks about and wears. Abstract Steve's come on. Let's get him in. I don't know where he got that from. <laughs> oh no, he's gonna be one of these hasn't got the internet. Hello, Steve. Other way. Evening. Hello, mate. Hello, what's that you got in your hand? You painting? Hello, hello. Oh no, there's some mad yeah. delay. Steve, I think there's a bit of a delay or something that's going to make this quite difficult, which is a shame because I like your, I like your painting. Oh, yeah. Maybe you could just paint in the background because I, I think this is going to be impossible to have a conversation. Right, right. Steve, are you watching? Are you watching I'm us? Painting. On Can you hear me, Chris? Or, or the, yeah. uh, that's the answer, YouTube. Steve. Yeah, sorry, Packer. Go on, ask him. Are you watching us on the steep on the Streamyard bit or the YouTube bit? Because you need to be on the Streamyard bit so that Stream we yard. sync properly. Oh, he's on Streamyard. Just, just a terrible lag then. Yeah, I'm on the Streamyard. I've, mute, I've muted YouTube. I'm on Streamyard. Right, Steve, I want you to say now when I say one. Well, I didn't hear you say it, but I saw your lips move, Chris. So I'll say now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's going to be really tricky to hold a conversation. I'll tell you what, I don't want you to go, though. So I'm going to give you the airtime. I'm going to let you tell us what you're doing and show us <clears> it. And, and, and I'll, I'll keep quiet. Let's... Abstract Steve, he's a painter, he's painting, he's moving his camera, he's got a palette, go for it. Packer, you can say anything you want if you want. Right, this is what I'm currently working on. Let me just... Everything's backwards on camera, isn't it? And it's... Uh... Your one. HIV. You, you've painted AIDS? Yeah, well, HIV, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I knew that. I knew they were different. A version right? of it. The one for you, Chris, over the other side. This is going to be a Cy Twombly. I do like Cy Twombly. What, you're going to do a cover version of a Cy Twombly? Yeah, and I'm going to do it. It's a famous one, so I'm sure you'll know it. Uh, Hero and Leandro. Yeah, I do, yeah. You're, what, you're going to re redraw it? Hang on, I thought that was a drawing. Well, no. You know how people put after... You know, Cy Twombly or whatever. And I'm going to do part one, it's called. It says Leandro on it, but I'm going to do it called Hero. And just uh, use different, oh, not different, not different oh, colours, but what you mean. a couple of. So oh, I'm, I'm going to look into it. When you said that it's uh, one of your favourite artists, so you're really into him at one time. So I thought I'll have a deeper look into, and I did. And I really took to Hero and Leandro. I thought, yeah, that really drew me in. So I thought, 
I can't really afford one of his now because they go for about 70 million. So I thought, well, yeah. I'll paint my own. I, I so like I his drawings more, literally just drawings, pencil, there's some charts. Yeah, yeah, I've seen I've seen all that. I've been looking into him really, watching on YouTube and looking at looking him up and what have you. And you really know what I was talking to one of my tutors at an art school once about Cy Twombly and he went to me, Do you know how many students Cy Twombly has ruined their career? <laughs> And I thought, oh shit, man! And then, and then, two years later, at another art school, <clears throat> I, ma I mentioned another painter. You might, rec I can't remember his name now, but you might know him. Does nudes a lot of the time, but you can almost see like little red crosses where he's marked them. If you name it, I'll know it. Yeah, There's, you can. Almost I've come see across it before, but I can't, I can't bring his name to the front of my mind. Well, I mentioned him, and this different art teacher two years later went, "If I if I told you the amount of art students that artist has careers ruined, I thought, hang on, this is just something that art tutors say when they don't like the artist you're you're really into <laughs> because they want you to be into their artists." Yeah, but of I must admit, I I did fail as an artist in that respect, so they were both right and wrong. So, Steve, do you paint every day? Is it is it something you do professionally? No, no. I think you'll know as a painter, Chris. You only paint when you're in the mood. If you're not in the mood, forget it, because what you produce is crap. Because I've forced right. myself to paint in the past, you know, when I thought paint, and then I've looked at it and thought, no, it's rubbish. There's, there's nothing imbued into it from you because you didn't want to do it. You weren't yeah. in the yeah. painting, if you know what I mean. Exactly the same with writing. Um I don't mean to cheapen things. Hello, 42, by the way. I don't mean to cheapen things, and it, it is a little bit, but have you ever painted on acid? No, no. i tell you what, right? I'd been working on a painting for about a year. It was an abstract piece, but there was a lot of thought. Complementary colours next to each other, but then around them trying to stop that... Uh, it was an experiment in complementary colours. For people who don't know, you've got a colour wheel. And the colours that are opposite each other on the colour wheel are called complementaries. Weirdly, they actually cause a bit of a visual sort of, what would you call it? Frustrato. <laughs> um, like orange and blue. And, and here's how you find the complementary of something. If you stare at the colour... Try and fill your vision with it and then shut your eyes. You'll see the complementary. You'll see the exact opposite of that colour you stared at on the colour wheel by staring at it. Anyway, I was fucking around with that and shape and line and form, all that. And I got on acid and there's a few of us in the house. And uh, we've got someone here that I've never, ever seen or heard of before. No worries. Wait one minute there, Dan Carty. Anyway, I've got on this acid with a few mates and they were talking some shit and I thought, I'm going to work on my painting. And of course, you know, I mean, let's be honest, a, a paper clip's interesting on acid. And I just started doing all this, thinking this is the most amazing painting I've ever done. It was all alive and it was, you know, there was like a cityscape in every brush stroke. It obviously woke up in the morning and I just painted over my painting with loads of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it. I didn't paint, but I did a drawing once, and I did the same as you. I thought that's the most fantastic <laughs> drawing that anyone's ever done. Until twelve hours later, or whenever you come yeah, down bro. and looked at it, and it was just literally it was like what? a sign, yeah. like just yeah. circle and circle and circle, uh, which I thought was outstanding until I was sober. It, it kind of tells you everything you need to know. Although I do like, I did like acid. Anyway, Steve, I'm going to talk to Dan Carty. Dan Carty. Oh, <laughs> I've never seen your name around here. Are you new in these parts? or Yeah, I am completely new. I just found your um, Dragon Den series recently. Oh, yeah, that's what I use um, it for. That is like a, like a, <laughs> a new subscriber sponge. Yeah. yeah, so I, I, I binge watched that recently, and then YouTube just popped up, hey, you're live. 
you want to watch, then you drop the link, they clicked it. So I have no idea what I'm doing here. But well, I'm no, glad. nor does anyone. But every pretty much everyone else in here knows each other, not from the real world, but from here. We've been doing this a while. But what what massive balls you've got to just say, I'll, I'll go on there. What, and, and, I mean, it sounded interesting. Why not? Um, Dan Carty, uh, roughly where are you, if you don't mind? You don't have to tell me. But... I'm, in, I'm in Switzerland. You lucky bastard. You lucked out there, didn't you? Look at that. I mean, I moved here. <laughs> I'm not from here. You're more lucky then, because somewhere along the line, you made a bit of, you made yourself a pound note and said, where am I going? Tell me it's, it's like paradise. It is, it is very nice. It I is. <laughs> I'm initially from Hungary. Oh, man. Oh, you're, you've, you've got it. I mean, this is just okay. Rub it. I'm from Hungary. And I, I lived a few years in London. And now here I am in Switzerland. So, so what do you do, Dan Carty? What, what's I your... um, code. I'm a software engineer. You're actually, you're actually on it. Yeah. So your your professional life this year has just gone crazy with the old stable diffusion, etc. I imagine is that what is everyone talking about jobs and and, and things and um, I mean the I'm working with generative AI. So for me, the biggest change was when ChatGPT was released. Yeah, and now we are competing against them. Thanks. Because, <laughs> I mean, I can get Chat GPT to write me code for things, mm -hmm. and I, I don't, I, I can get it to write Python, can't I? If I really wanted it to. Yes, yes, you probably can. No, you can, um, you can. I see someone do it, but I, I haven't. I'm not pretending I have because I haven't even got the. I don't. I think that's where the the, the glitch is. You can get it. But to do you, it, but you need to know what to tell it. Mm -hmm. do, do you code sometimes? No, God, no, I can be mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I, I did test it initially. Um, it, it can do stuff. It, it makes mistakes, but it yeah. can definitely do stuff. So as long as you know what you're doing, you can make it write a lot of code, then you have to debug it yourself. But um, it can be helpful. But many companies, like larger tech companies now, will have their own version that, you know, fine-tuned for writing code. Okay, then you and, keep going. Mm -hmm. And then you basically just write your own code and it will, like an autocomplete, um, tell you, hey, maybe this is the text and lines that you want to write here. And it's often pretty good. Dan, Dan Carty, can, what, what do you do, though, as a coder? You, mm -hmm. what, what is your actual work? So what do you do people say so what's my actual work um one part of the work is just uh data collection basically you want to teach the ai to to do something right let's say you want to say hey now search for images it is how you search images well you have to first collect high quality data usually this means I write up a task as an engineer and it gets sent out to people. I haven't um, understood a word of what you're talking. I don't have no, it's not your okay. your your language yes, skills. Yes. My, I don't understand any of this. Yeah, so but you have some concept that you know these big tech companies collect a bunch of data, train AI on it. So we're talking right? but, talent here. Um, no, we're talking Google. <laughs> okay. So basically, Google has pays a lot of people, usually in uh, not necessarily the richest countries. No, for I know. data collection. It's amazing. So, um, so they're paying people, uh, as you said, not necessarily in the richest countries, to do the very boring job of just getting the data into the machine. Yes. So basically, wow. as an engineer, I can write up a task, and then eventually I will get back the data. So you haven't said this, so you're not implicating yourself, but I've just conceived of 
digital sweat lodges? I have no idea. <laughs> that's, that's I am not, not there. No, like, that's, from, that's good. Fr no, from my point of view, I shot. send a task out and I get data back. What, what happens in between? How? I have no idea. Did you plan this in your life? Did you, when you were very young, did you think, I like computers, I'm going to learn about them, I'm going to do a course in them, and then I'm going to get employed doing it? Or has it been a bit accidental? Um, somewhere, in, somewhere in between. I always like coding. So already very young, I... If you ask very young me, I, would have, I wanted to work at Google. Then I had oh, a detour, cool. and I did... Um, a lot of mathematics instead of coding. And then I said, okay, I will do research, which I did for a few years in London. But then, you know, um, the thing with research is that you don't really have a very um, direct impact on you know, reality. I can write my research papers, but what I was doing wasn't too applied. It was very theoretical. Weird. That sort of, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, um, Dan Carty, do you remember the James Damore thing? When that James Damore, he worked for Google, and they, no. uh, oh, yeah, it was about four or five years ago, they asked everyone to write, they asked everyone to come along to this presentation of why there were more females in coding. And they said, if you've got any feedback, let us know. And James Damore wrote a paper explaining, um, you know, going using biological peer-reviewed papers, why mm -hmm. there isn't so many women encoded. And they fought, Google fired him. It was quite a big story at the time. Oh, really? Yeah. He yes. came on his channel. Really? Came, yeah. You look up James <laughs> Damore. James is in James and D-A-M-O-R-E. But the thing was, he was very shy, and when he come on, he had a massive nose, and I asked him if he'd go sideways. Do you remember, Packer? Do you remember when James Damore come on? And I said, show us your, your nose, and it didn't, didn't oh, go don't down. Down. You don't remember sure? that? No. Can, can you just look at what's going on here, Packer? Look, we've got Abstract Steve painting the HIV virus in his kitchen there. We've got Dan Carty, who's uh, he's, he's got like a floating head going on, which is rather nice. We've got you <laughs> and me, and 42, who hasn't said a thing. How are you, 42? I'm doing good, mate. Uh, I was just uh, going to explain. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dan Carty, 42, is from a, a little town called Northern Ireland. And <laughs> no one knows what he's talking about his accent <laughs> is just and not only that in between words he goes mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So okay just, just not i shall translate this into english <laughs> <laughs> i was just waiting to get an opportunity to he explain can't it. he can't do it look he's trying to speak the queen's in king's english and he can't do it yeah. he cannot do yeah. it I, I was going to explain to Packer, the difference oh. between wafers and pins. Oh my God! It's oh. Pulling rank. <laughs> See, I, I even put it on super chat. You haven't got it yet. No, I'm but quite I simple. Have you. Go on. Right. I'm have a look. Wafers are bastards, and they are sprung from both ends and can be at both ends at the one time. You may need a double-sided tensioner. And pins are predictable. He's been on Wikipedia, Pack. I wouldn't... wouldn't no, I haven't. I've been fucking losing my mind to this fucking stupid lock out of my locker. Now, we talked about this. Why didn't you come to me and I'd have sorted you out, 42? Yeah. yeah. I haven't got round to it. But, but do so because you've done so a lot yeah. for me and I can help you out and I can get you some decent kit. Yep, yeah, I definitely will. To get into so a locker? Uh, what? Yep. Yeah, yes, the key, I've got a locker key lock and it is doing my fucking nut in. 
You see, well, one, 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 so you're not actually locked out of a locker, then it's just a locker key lock. Yes, it is a locker key lock. Give me oh. one moment, though. I think I can actually manage to do this. I've got an a idea. Bit of Italian there from uh, uh, 42. Uh, Packer, so it would appear that what he's not telling you is 42 has started lock sporting. He's now picking locks for pleasure. Oh, my gosh. Look, the most we've ever seen of 42. Look, he's doing so, his little lock picking video. Yeah, see, I've, got, I've got this fucking thing, right? Um, I can't that's a piece of piss. I'll, I'll pick that with my little toe. Yeah. Um, Have you tried I, raking it? 42, that's a rake job all day long. Yep, yeah, I've had a rake, but what I'm not sure about is do I put the tensioner at the top, at the bottom? If you've got, have you got, a, have you got a double-sided rake? No. Ah, you see, I, because you don't I, need. Yes, I have a double-sided rake. Well, you don't need a tensioner because you put the turning pressure on with the te with the rake. Right. No, I got a question. Go. Okay. See if I press against this bit at the back, yeah, which would work as the lock and opener. Yeah. And then rake. Will that open? No, no, you don't need no, that right, thing I, at the back. Just leave that alone. That, if anything, that's going to cause you problems putting tension on that. Hold it where you're holding it now on the sort of body of the lock. And when you put a double, so you need some double sided wafer rakes. That's what you need. Right. And give me one moment, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the old Italiano down to a T. Dan Carty, do you um you pick locks at all? This isn't the lock uh, pick no. next week. I never tried. I've seen oh. some YouTube videos in my life. I don't think yours, but you didn't need to that, say that. I... You didn't need to say that. <laughs> Dan, you, you could have lied and just said yours, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me who you have seen because I know it will be, and I, I don't like that name in my Why not? It, it gets a little bit. It's, it's politics. Let's say that. Mm. I mean, it's not just a hobby for me, it's my livelihood. Oh, um, Mr. Mr. 42, this is what yes. you need to get, mate. Have a look. Get your head around the. Right, I'm trying to figure out what. What way this camera works? Why is that so small? That's <laughs> ridiculous. I've I've shared the wrong screen. Is that thing any use? Hang on, hang on, hang on, mate. Let me just get you. Here you are. This is what you need. Set of these some wafer rakes. And now, right. although there is a tensioner there, can you see my? Yeah, like, yes, I can see exactly what you want. Use that if. That's only used on like old locks that have got a little curtain over them to stop you picking them. But these rakes, you put the tension on as you're raking it. It's just in, out, in, out, in, out of a little bit of clockwise tension. Right. right. And there's wafers at the top and there's wafers at the bottom. So yeah. do you have to do two of them at the same time. Let me have a look what tool you're sticking in there. Put it on the back of your hand. That's the traditional way of doing it. Now lift, now move that up to the camera. <laughs> look at him. Look. It's about that's about half a millimeter big on my screen. That's yeah. not gonna pick that lock because you're not gonna be able to engage both sides at once. Are you sure it's right. a double sided wafer lock? Well, I, I don't think it's a wafer. I don't think it's a wafer rake, but it is a rake, and there are points on both sides. You can you can like rake wafer locks with those, but if it's a double sided wafer lock, you're not going to be able to because you're only going to engage one half of them. And what they'll be that, that they'll be they'll be a part they'll be sprung opposed alternately. So while you're raking one side, you yep. could you, in theory you could rake one side, set a few. Then rake the other side, set a few, then go back to the other side. Try that maybe. Not now, obviously, because Yeah, no, not now. <laughs> doing this shit all day long. And quite frankly, I feel like throwing you away. 
<laughs> oh, in 42, what's that jumper you've got on there? Christmas? Have you left that on since last Christmas? That ain't no, even you. Uh, oi, oi, 42, it's not you. It's bloody abstract Steve's painting. I thought that was your jumper. <laughs> <laughs> you can see what I mean, though, people. Like, I'm just... I need yes. new glasses. Sorry, Steve. Yes, because the, the line of... The outline of his painting sort of comes in the line of where my arm is. That's it. If Pac was slightly more as athletic, he'd be able to finish that and have a head to it. Go on, go on, Pac. I'd love you to. Right, no, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, up. Go on, up. To your right. To you, that's it. <laughs> I don't know why that's tickled me. There you go. We made a thr a thrusen. Right. I'm going to stop that madness. 42, let's talk about that in private. I'll certainly help you out yeah. and I'll get you some kit, mate. Yeah, it that that one's been doing my hair then. Uh, I had done all my sort of padlocky stuff and whatnot, and this was the next lock that I found. And I would, it, I would start with pin cylinders and, and learn single yeah. pin picking. That's you're, you're, you know, raking, I love be. raking, but it's got its limits. And once you've mastered single pin picking, you'll be able to transfer those skills onto wafer locks. Yeah, I can. Well, having said that, i done that thing that I got one of those very, very secure master locks. That <laughs> yeah. And I can single pin pick uh, a master lock. I'd, I'd, I hope so. I would hope so. Yeah. You, can, you can single pick, drop them, and they open. But... Um... Good work. You got it. well done though. Mouse cat says that a club hammer opens about eighty percent of locks. See, well, that's why I was going to go with his locker lock because if you want to get into a locker, you just jam a flathead screwdriver into it and then turn the screwdriver with a spanner. They're, yes, they're, 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 they're the philistines, aren't they? And then, then that. when you've got the lock open, the locker open, you go and buy a new lock for it. But, yeah. But, Frank, well, what this about is the the fine art of lock picking, the meditation of picking locks. Yeah. Also, also <laughs> hypothetically, in <laughs> Minecraft, if you wanted into a locker, you would also want to be able to close that locker so it would look like you'd never been there. But I would also say that never, ever, ever attempt to pick a lock that's not your own because you could break it and then end up in all sorts of problems. No, yeah, it's stay legal for sure, uh, yeah. or otherwise you get in trouble. Lulu, this is that's this is my bread and butter, love. Um, if you you stick my name into the old Google Tron, old uh, Dan Carty's code will send you to some lock picking stuff. Hello, oh, Ch honey. Charlie. Charlie's <laughs> actually been watching the lock picking videos and commenting on them. She's actually enjoying <laughs> them. I have what I've seen. Oh, you're gonna we're gonna have a right laugh at this live stream. So Dan Carty, I've got another channel which is lock picking, as you've probably gathered, and I'm starting to do live streams, but because no one's they're not signing up in numbers because there's no live stream lock picking channels. So I've asked my friends here in the glorious house of scrubs if they'll sign up for a month just to get the ball rolling. But a few of them, uh, like Charlie, is getting uh, a little bit too close for comfort. Next thing you know, look, Lulu, watch some as well. There you go. Ludwig drops random things in, but, you know, there you go. Um, Packer, ever thought about Switzerland? No. No. Dan Carty, do, do, you work, do you work remotely or, or are you employed in Switzerland? I'm employed in Switzerland. We mostly work hybrid, so I go in three days a week to remote. What, they let you work two days at home or you only work three days a week? They let me work two days at home. And that's called hybrid. Is that to maintain an element of team... You know, otherwise, I you know. think so. And in all honesty, uh, meetings work better in person. Yeah. No and much. for some people, they even like to do their coding there in the office. I much prefer to do it at home. 
Did you say you prefer to do it at home? Yes, I prefer to do it at home, like the coding part of the work, with all the big... meetings, talking to people, whatever. Do you, do you do it with a big packet of crisps and some chocolate bars and all that, like the, the, the stereotype of the coder? I guess. <laughs> I didn't even really. deny it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know, even in, in the office, there is always, like, they put out a healthier snack to keep us healthy, but there are always snacks that you can just pick up. Office snacks. Hello, Bill. How are you? Nice to see you. Illuminata says, I often think about Switzerland like Paul Newman in The Great Escape. He's just over there. Is Paul, Paul Newman's not in The Great Escape? What version have you seen? I'll bet you 30 English notes. There's no Paul, Paul Newman, Great Escape, Steve McQueen, you pillock. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Where have you been? Good gosh. Thought the internet had died. Disappeared. Hello, Mark. Pax Max. There you go. He's he's he's, he's one of you lot. He's uh, Cheetos. He, he, there you, I didn't want to say. I didn't want to <coughs> say. Actually, go as far as to say. Well, yes, Cheetos and Mountain Dew, but I, I don't. I don't do any of those. But I do. I think those are the most stereotypical, maybe. Yeah, and the and the Cheeto dust is exceptionally mm. stereotypical. You have to sort of comb That's it out wow. of your beard in the morning. That sort ah, of... I see. <laughs> yeah. um, what's the uh, what? What do you hope to do? You, have you got a plan? How old are you? I'm thirty. Rough. How old? Thirty-ish. And are you gonna be coding for other companies for the rest of your life, or have you got a plan to go solo, or you don't think about it? I don't plan to go solo. That's not my thing. Um, That's right, yeah, man. coding for other companies sounds possible. I can always. For now, I like coding, so I will keep coding. If I ever well, get tired of it, I will go you, back to yeah. Do you, sorry to keep interrupting. Do you actually enjoy it? You enjoy doing it? Yes, yes. I enjoy the coding part. There are other stuff that comes with the job that I don't necessarily enjoy. Sure, sure. But the coding part I do. Is it is it because it is it sort of problem solving? Is that Yes, the... exactly, exactly. My background is very mathematical, which Yeah, is you said it. Problems. I mean, even I'm so the other way from all that. I'm you know, <laughs> I what I don't know what I'm very, I don't like the saying, but I think what people would say is I'm very right brain. Logic numbers, mm -hmm. I just haven't got what well, you know. I can't even work out basic maths anymore, mm -hmm. like, but yeah, but, so, sort of the interesting part is not you know typing in the code, it's you know, you get a problem, then designing the solution to it is sort of the challenging, interesting part of the work. Do you then sometimes? Do you sometimes sit there like it's getting light, you've been doing it all night and you're nearly there and you press run and it looks like it's going to work and then it goes, eh, eh, and you go, no! <laughs> oh, down off your knees, like, no! Maybe I don't do it that dramatically, but... No, nah, yeah. yes, you do. Come on, we know you do. We know you do. Um, I think... <laughs> You only see this in movies, right? That people just code endlessly and then they run it. What, what it. happens in reality is that, like, I write, I write like five codes and then I run it again to see if it still works. And I write five <laughs> code lines and I still run it. It's not like you know you work three hours and then you figure, okay, was everything in these three hours correct? So, so you have got get too far. monitors that have all got the matrix sort of green letters going down. Yeah, I mean, if I'm the office, yes. If I'm at home, I uh, I don't have a setup, so I just use my laptop. Really? But at work, you've got quite a powerful system, have you? Yes, but I basically don't use my own laptop to run anything. You just, you know, log into a something in the cloud and use resources there. Pack it doesn't matter what, what my laptop is physically. Um, um, Dan Carty, what do you make of Abstract Steve's painting there? 
I'm not a understander of art, but it, I'm it looks good. I'm putting down next to you so you can have a closer look. <laughs> <laughs> You're not an understander of art. I, I don't think I am. No, Barclay isn't either. Um, well, there you go. We've got we've, Steve, look, you're standing next to it, all proud there. So, <laughs> would, you mind, would you mind telling me about it? Maybe that makes it easier for me. Right, there's a uh, slight delay with Steve, but <coughs> Steve, uh, take it away. Tell Dan Carty about your work. Uh, well, this current work is based on HIV, you know, at the microscopic level. Mm -hmm. So that's it, basically, in a nutshell. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it kills you. <laughs> Steve, what do you I make see. of that comment from Barrett Zippo? He says, I prefer Packers curtains. Well, that's... each to their own. Some that's people it. hate a piece of art, some people love a piece of art, and it can be the same piece of art, <laughs> love or hate. No. Just Why just you know to... I don't prefer my curtain. <laughs> What's the significance of the orange line that's sort of bordering up? Oh, this. Yeah, that's a like a invasion, if you like. So I don't know how. Right. If you can see it really close up, it's like sort of feathered. Ah, and that's and it's it... ever slowly advancement. So, yeah, so it's suggesting movement upwards in this case, as it were. In other words, an infection. Yeah. Well, yeah, that makes sense. And um, 42, ever had HIV? No. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would be a no. You know what? Uh, when I was living in Soho, unsurprisingly, I knew loads of people and it was weird because in the 80s it was like everyone you know is going to die of the AIDS, this is the tip of the iceberg and the and people sort of under them. the impression that it's not the type of infection you can have hard it's sort of something <laughs> once you've got it's there forever I yeah, at the moment, yes, I think you're right. But the people I know who had it, they managed it like they were they were athletic, they looked great. Um it certainly wasn't the horror movie I was told in the eighties for no reason at all, apart from to demoralise the entire nation a little bit more. And you know what? When I was sitting there watching it scared to death, like twelve years old, my dad said to me, he said, Listen, we had all this with V D. He said, it ain't going to happen. He said, it's going to be all right. And, I, and and he was right, really. I mean, people have got it, yes. But I was a bit gutted when Ian Jury was on the 6 o'clock news with a, a a phallus. On the 6 o'clock news, Ian Jury put a condom on a, a fake penis. And me and mum and dad and brother are sitting there eating our dinner. It was so English. It was like... Oh, I suppose that's how you put a condom on then. <laughs> that's how Ian Jury does it. Oh, well, they, I, okay, you ever I do to know. have an interesting theory about all of that. Go for it. Right. Whenever AIDS came along, condoms went from being the only contraceptive that there are available for meals, except for a vasectomy and became a protection against a deadly illness. And then the men who were in stable relationships using barrier contraception were asked were they only doing that in order that they could sleep around, and their partners went on the pill and took total control of the reproductive cycle. Very, very interesting. I mean, there was so much deception. The uh, the idea that junkies spread AIDS, um, or HIV, sorry, it's important to get it right. You know what? That The HIV in blood, it dies about half a second when it's in air. And, and the only way you can get it by sharing a needle is, is by sticking the needle in, pulling blood into it, which you do anyway, injecting a bit of it, and then giving the rest to your mate, 
that's got gear in it and your blood. And in 30 odd years of intravenous drug use, I never saw anyone do that. Not never. No one's here. Yeah, do you want some gear? Yeah, I'd love some. It's got my blood in it. No, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of those people want all of their own gear. Yeah, there is that too. Yeah, sharing's a yeah. weird thing. They talk about don't share needles. Well, <laughs> yeah, you've you've missed a logical point in the process there, my friend. But yeah, yeah. I reckon they I reckon they had a, there was a you know much like the COVID, it would they jump on these things, they exploit them as much as possible to come at us from all angles. You know, my generation was basically told, don't have sex. You know, don't have sex. And if you do have sex, don't touch her. Don't let your genitals touch hers. <laughs> what? That is sex, though. <laughs> we didn't listen, though, did we? Pardon? We didn't listen, though, did we? No. No, we didn't. But we, I was a bit scared, though, I must admit. Oh, really interesting thing. We finally got the figures for the referrals to gum clinics during the COVID lockdowns. Dan Carty, can you understand the word he's saying? You mostly, yes. That's a no, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'll try it again. After three years, we oh, got the cool. figures for the amount, the reduction of referrals to gum clinics, as in... Genital medicine. Yeah, yes. During the COVID lockdown, and they reduced by 15%. Hang on, hang on. So 15% less people went to get their genitals checked out during the lockdown. Yes. And um, what does that tell us, 42? It tells us that people were a lot closer than six feet apart. <laughs> <laughs> with people that they did not previously know or have a relationship with. It's kind of reassuring, isn't it? Yes. I've been to loads of those. They call them STIs now, didn't they? They used to call them STDs. Then it was STIs. I fainted, of course, is my famous... Well, I say famous, but... I fainted in a... I had a genital walk, right? Now, these days, when you get a genital walk, they boss this little bit of nothing on it. A week later, it's gone. But back in 1988, they put a bit of plant extract on it. But when that doesn't work, they move up to a bit of acid. Acid. When the acid doesn't work, liquid nitrogen spray on your penis. Yeah, when they... that doesn't work acid and liquid nitrogen now because i didn't really want to go to the doctors and say i've got something horrible i thought it was a scar but it kept getting bigger and bigger and um in the end my girlfriend who suddenly also got one on her anus sorry i'm so sorry i had to i'm sorry <laughs> but that you know that was so i'm sorry dan Carter. it is always like this it, it all roads end up here essentially but um so it was that point I had to go because she worked out. Imagine the anus like a clock face. She worked out where the walt was on my penis and where it was like it was about quarter past two. And on a bum clock face, it was at about quarter past two. If I were going in the standard, you know, not missionary, <laughs> but doggy style. Anyway. So I've gone in there and he went to me. Usually we put a bit of plant extract on it. I was like, sweet. And he went, yeah, you're well past that stage. <laughs> oh, no, thanks. He went, that's all right. He goes, we use acid then. And I was like, oh, that don't sound too good. He went, yeah, you're well past that stage. I said, okay, uh, what, what's next then? Is it there for life? He went, no, nah, we then go for liquid nitrogen. I went, you're going to freeze my penis. He went, yeah, a bit of it. He said, but you're past that stage, so we're going to have to go for the liquid nitrogen and acid. I said, is it going to hurt? And he went, <laughs> I'll never forget it, though, because I was serious. It's a fair question, isn't it? You know, when you're 18, I was about 30, really, but we'll, we'll take it back. When you're 18, your penis is quite important. Like, it is the most important thing. 
um, I thought, is it going to hurt? And he said, look, he said, no, because it's going to be frozen. Right. Remember that line. So I think <laughs> it could come out with something like this, like some scientific surgical tool that's going to be like, boom, with like a laser fine, just just a little bit there. I swear to you, he, he wheeled in. It, they look like oxyacetylene tanks, you know, for like, um, what do they call them? For cutting Welding. chips. Welding. No, they, uh, oh, someone in the chat must know. They they cut through, they can, these things can cut through like six inches of metal. Thermal lance. Thermal, thermal, lance. thermal oh. lance. That's what I thought of. And I, I, I said, mate, I said, I know I've got rather a large member, but that does seem a little bit over the top. He went, ha, ha, ha. He said, just sit down and take your trousers off. So I sat down and laid down and he got his little gloves on and he got this thing and it went, You know, like in uh, Back to the Future when that car's revving up. <laughs> and then he went. Pssst. And I, I, I saw him like just looking out the window while he was just going. Pssst. And then he pushed his thumb onto the, the wall was about the size of a match head. Right. And when he pushed his thumb on it and took it off, because it was frozen, it left like a concave thumb shape in my penis, right? But I didn't feel any pain because it was frozen. And then he went... <laughs> Never thought out. Well, yeah. I said, what happened <laughs> now? He said, well, he said, that will blister. The blister will burst. The top bit of skin will fall off, taking the wall with it. He said, make an appointment for next week and when you come next week, it will almost certainly be at that stage and we'll just, just check. I got into reception. There's three birds in reception who I knew from school. Hello, how's life treating you? <laughs> As you got problems? Yeah, okay. Because that was all it was. It was a cotton fanning clinic. And I said to the woman behind the jump, I said, apparently I've got to make an appointment. And at that point, fuck me, man. Imagine the pain of your penis defrosting. Literally defrosting. It, it felt like it felt like someone was cutting it in half. And I just went to, I've got to make them a, uh, And that was it, out cold, out cold. <laughs> the moral of this story, nah, there isn't one. <laughs> How did your girlfriend get on with her? <clears throat> I nearly said it's a sore point then. And, mm. and I, I, I had to hold back. It was weird because cheating on your girlfriend's bad enough at that age isn't it but giving her some old tarts genital waltz is you know so every time it was mentioned it was like yeah you gave me that there oh so you didn't like to bring it up very often then i like to ignore it i think is the word <laughs> i choose i'd like to pretend it didn't happen i hope she's not watching this Bless you, darling. I'm so sorry. I was an arsehole. I was really fucked. It's gone quite bad here, isn't it? Yeah. Dan Carty. Dan Carty. Who's talking? Who's that? I can't see. Me. So, so it's me. I was blabbering. Don't worry about it. Ask Dan Everybody, Carty. Uh, you, your missus is there, so I'm not going to ask her. Dan no, Carty, have you ever had a sexually transmitted disease? I have. I haven't had. I don't think coders get a lot of sex, though, do they? <clears throat> Not really. <laughs> the nervous hand on the head. Not really. <laughs> no, I was thinking what was the best way to answer it, because I don't want to speak, you know, for, for other coders, but oh, I've been in far worse. You know, two, two, two long-term relationships in my life, and that, that, that was it. Or well, that's okay theory. though. No, absolutely yeah. nothing wrong with that. And and what? And the second one ended. Was well, that your? I, I mean the second one. Sorry, I. I oh, you're still in it. You I have a lover. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you love her? 
Yeah. Oh, how long have you been together? About four years. Is it going well? It's going well, but it is long distance. Uh, well, that's you. That's probably why it's going well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, 42, have you got anything you want to leave us with? Uh, well, I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. Steve, abstract Steve, have you got anything you want to leave us with? I'm going to get some different guests in just because I like to, you know, no, that's no, how it I'm works. Carry on dancing. All right, well, let us know how it goes. And if you want to email me it when it's finished, I'll, I'll, I'll show the scrubs the finished work. <laughs> okay, will do. Dan Carty. Have you got anything you'd like to say before I oof you? Yes. Everyone, make sure to share all your data with Google. I will use it for the most amazing AI. Oh, look. <laughs> he's, he's, he's gone in hard and heavy. Look at that. <laughs> um, listen, Dan, I've, I, I'm going to call you Dan now. I think that's very brave of you to come on and just talk and you've stayed here and how lovely. And I'm glad you're enjoying the Dragon's Den. I really am. I've got another one ready. The problem with them is I always get uh, a community guideline for copyright. Then I've mm. got to appeal it. Now, when you make a video, you want to, you want it to go live and it's, it <coughs> takes a bit of the enthusiasm out of it when I know that, I've got to wait a week and get all the, and write another appeal and all this luck. D or a Dan in the chat for Dan people. Look at all those in the chat. Loads of them. Dan Carty, 42, sorry, 42. Have you got a final thing? Yes, I have. Dan, very nice to meet you. Chris, thank you very much for having me on. And to the glorious house of scrubs that are out there, much love and thank you. Well, there you go. What a lovely bunch of people. Dan, 42, and Abstract Steve, take care. Ta-da. Bye-bye, everyone. Look at that. Packer, what did you make of that? I like that. I wanted to actually wanted to look around um, Steve's little setup he's got there. He looked like he was, he, he's got his own little artist it, room. Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wasn't sure whether it was <laughs> whether he's got actual an actual space to do his painting or he's just taken over a room in the house. I have seen the super chats coming in and they're filling me full of life. I will read them all for sure. Alan, something happened the other day, but you then I that was aimed at you, or not aimed at you, something something to do with you but then i read a comment where you said i had to leave or something but i can't for the life of me remember what it was if it comes back i'll tell you nice to see you though alan it was the mighty dan look at that look mike says type dan if you've been in a brass he's he's done it and he's stitched them all right up with that one <laughs> Packer, when i said what did you think of that you said i liked it what did you like about that about what what are you asking me about? Yeah, the first run of guests. Yeah, it's nice to meet new people, isn't it? I like Dan. I've not seen Abstract Steve before, and um, 42 is always good for it, isn't he? Steve's been on here a few times. I haven't seen him. I, I'm sure I ain't. Probably then. They're those nights when you're down the boozer. Yeah, that's that'll be a Wednesday when all these people are on that I've never seen. Okay, Wednesday people, I call them. Um, it's five o'clock in the morning. I'm going to put the link. Hello, Philip. What a pleasure to see you, long time. I'm going to put the link in. We'll get a couple more on. I'm going to do the super chats while we're waiting for people. Anglo for the Mrs. Sick Water Buffalo. I've got a, not a mate, but a bloke I met here who's falling for that one at the moment. He's met some bird and he went to me. I said, I said, just be careful, you know. He went, she's a lovely girl, he said. He said she's working every hour God sends to get her nana a new buff, a new cow it was. And I went, hey, really? <laughs> Jack's coming on. Jack, let me get through the rest of these um, super chats and then we'll we'll get chatting. You know how it works. He's actually falling for it, Anglo, as we speak. Anyway, I said, mate, it's just, look it on, look up on Google. It's a, it's a classic Southeast Asian blag. He went, not her, though. He said, you know when you can just tell? I said, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Nice one, Anglo. Brad's dropped a couple in. I can't stay long. Oh, sorry, Brad. 
you can't stay long here or in the the you signed up for the other one so that'll be interesting i don't know but nice to see you anyway not thanks for helping us out on the other stream thanks for that don't eat 42 wafers of bastards may need yeah well i'll talk to you about that 42 i'll i'll send you something that will sort you out and i'll take you i can send you a couple of videos as well thanks for the donation as well um what else we got here hands is on the firm i inhaled <laughs> I inhaled so much diesel today, your show cures my headache away. Hoyt, well, hoyt to that. Is that was that meant to rhyme? Or, or what did you inhale diesel deliberately, or is it just part of your work? I'm, 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 I'm. Alan has called me meat. Oh, that's a bit sensual, Alan. <laughs> Hello, meat. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Very kind, very generous. Uh, I still I can't remember what so I, it might have been it's probably about Appalachia because that's the usual link with you but anyway nice one on the air and center I know that's a typo Fed Marshall that's got to be Barclay in it who's Fed Marshall oh look now Jack London smiled then which makes me feel like he's in on he don't no, know no 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 I'm just happy yeah, well, I like that. Mouse Cat says, thank you, Alan, for that donation, mate. Chris is lockpicking. Chris is lock... Chris, comma, is lockpicking a kind of an analogy for a quest for knowledge and breaking down of systems. There is research to show that it does help with... Uh, it, it helps with degenerative brain diseases because you're, you know, like puzzle solving. But whether it's an analogy, I just learned it because my mum and dad put a lock on the old dial phone when me and my brother used to make prank calls and order skips for the people who lived over the road. And once I got that buzz of opening a lock, I couldn't bloody let go of it, Mouse Cat. I bloody couldn't let go of it. Nice one, mate. I'll think about it. He's come back with an air and said, I've got a theory. You were disillusioned by magic tricks. I was disillusioned by the magician's trick, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Saw lots of a challenge because of the hidden mystery involved. Made a business out of it. You know the 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 uh, the startup story, didn't you? I won't bore everyone with it now, but it was all kind of accidental, but maybe not. Maybe it was unconsciously driven. Most things are. I'll have a think about it, Mouse Cat, and get back to you. Nice one on the Darcy. DB, DB on the firm. That HIV bowling advert, I don't remember the bowling one. Nor does anyone else. That uh, might have been just yeah. an Australian thing, Dawn. There's only like two bowling alleys in England. Thank you, though. Uh, I might look it up in a minute, though. LC350, long time no see, sir. £10, one Ayrton Senna on the palm. Alan has paid another tenner to correct his typo. Oh, you didn't need to do that. I knew what you meant. I want to call you meat, though, from now on, Alan, because things like that make me laugh. You don't need to pay a tenner to say don't. <laughs> I, I won't call you meat. Nice to see you anyway. That was very generous. I will have to stream again soon. There you go. That's the man of my word. Right, we've got a mystery guest, and it's all like twinkling. Thank you, everyone who donated. Right, let's see what's going on here. All right, Fed Marshall. <laughs> Hello. Female. Fed Marshall. Is that <laughs> is it? It's Emma G, right? Field, Field Marshall. <laughs> It says Fed Marshal. <laughs> Dawny. Yeah, I know. It's, it's an ink. It's, <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Come on. How do you <sighs> get that orange kind of. Yeah, look at that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Come on, Packer. Yeah, yeah. You're not looking at me because I haven't got all my teeth in. <laughs> and I'm feeding the chicken. What time is it there? It is 9 a.m. Or thereabouts. Oh, so this works well for you. Oh, it's, I've just realised it's five a.m. here. Have you just woken up? Uh, gosh, no. I've been up since what five o'clock. Is that because you've got like your sort of farm? I say sort of, but you've got like a small holding. Is it a small holding or is it a farm? Yeah, 
it's like a, a mini home set up for it. Mini homestead. I'm very yeah, envious yeah, of you and Master Dan's life. All your tweets. Well, Master not Dan. What did I say, Master Dan? <laughs> Master That's Dan. Like Dan. There were so many Dans in the chat. Sorry, I knew it was Master Ben. But you know, all your apart from the tweets when you reply to bearing as Mrs. Sugar Tits, because that's just two sort of Aussie women being dirty, uh, which isn't all, all bad. But it's all like wholesome and like foods you've grown and animals you look after and and nice yeah. outdoor places. Turned out that's nice, awesome. hasn't it? It has. It's been absolutely brilliant. Um, am I echoing or is it? Me echoing to me. No, it's fine. Is it all right with you, Jack? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Dawn's coming through loud and clear. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, no, um, you yeah, started off growing during COVID when we got locked down. I, I had a little potager and then with three crates, like above ground crates, because we get really boggy here. And then during lockdown, Master Ben didn't work for eight months, so we built me another. Uh, 32 crates, so now we're fully self sufficient with all our veggies. And what you don't need to buy vegetables ever? Well, in in winter, um, I had to buy two tomatoes. Master Ben wanted a burger with a lot, and we have no tomatoes because so they don't grow in winter. And yeah, I went, oh gosh, it was right, palaver. Shopping for tomatoes. <laughs> Goodness me. They just, they didn't smell right. They didn't look right. And Did they eventually found it looked, nice looked food. all right. Yeah. And uh, these tomatoes, they smell all right, looked all right. It was costing me like, what, two pounds for two tomatoes because they were all gamut. <laughs> and I brought them home. And then I put them outside for the day so they could have some sunlight because they'd been hydroponically grown. Oh, they never really sorry they for them. They're lying. <laughs> they've got, they've got and then no I chopped, chase. Then I chopped them up. <laughs> and, and, they actually and weren't they... too bad. Okay. Because I, I remember I, I had a bloke mm -hmm. I used to buy contraband off. And, and you can imagine what sort of things. I don't need to say it. But one okay. day he turned up with like crates upon. Well, a lorry pulled up outside, and I was like, "Nah." This was a bloke who asked my mum if she wanted half a cow. And when she said yep. she wanted to be polite, she said, "I haven't got room in the fridge." And he rang her up five minutes later and said, "Do you want a new fridge?" Lovely bloke. <laughs> He's pulled up, and I thought this is going to be a problem. It usually is, and he said he went, "Worthington, I've got." I've got hundreds of, hundreds of uh, he didn't even know what they were called. I said, they're cucumbers. <laughs> he said, I've got thousands of them. He went, can you get rid of them? I said, maybe like two. He went, what, two crates? I was like, no, two cucumbers. <laughs> and apparently they were all grown hydroponically in Denmark. Not by him. I, I, the fuck knows what was going on. I, I never really got to the, you know, it weren't worth asking because I don't know if he knew half the time. His missus comes on here sometimes. I mean, he's no longer with us anymore, bless him. But um, oh, yeah, yeah when, I, when I thought about that, because I ate one, I, I said, I'll try one, ah, a little freebie. I'll, I'll give you a sample, and if they're any good, I'll see if I can move some uh, cucumbers for you. But when I ate it, I just felt a little bit, I thought, this has never seen sun. This is like a vegetable that has not grown in the sun. That I haven't got a problem with hydroponics. <laughs> I've got through plenty of <laughs> weed. Yeah. But something, when you're putting it into your mouth, when you when it's nutrition, there's got to be something. There's something wrong with that, I think. Yeah, it, it, it is sad. Mm. Yeah, I just but, I think, you know. It, it, sorry, go on. I think it, like, if it's somewhere like England where you can't grow in winter, um, then having a hydroponic system, you know, with lights and everything, that's a, an option, isn't it? I suppose so, but it, it's not as easy as people think, all that hydroponics, because you've actually got to recreate, you know, the the world in your broom cupboard. <laughs> I mean, or, or in a greenhouse. <laughs> I meant to say, sorry. 
<laughs> and you know, that involves extractor fans, humidifiers, dehumidifiers, carbon dioxide generators, you know, automatic watering, all sorts of malarkey. And get it wrong, it, even the food you had, we had to buy this thing. It was called oh, someone in someone in the chat's done hydroponics. It basically measured the dissolved salts, a conductivity meter. It was two mm. prongs that stuck out of a long... It looked like a... <laughs> it looked sensual. And it had these two little copper prongs, and you put it in the water, and it told you how many parts per million dissolved salts were in the water. So you'd get your water out of the tap. You'd leave it overnight so that the chlorine or something would get out of it. You'd measure the PPM of salts, and it would be around 600. And then when I moved to Leeds, it was about 4,000. I was like, what are these people drinking, man? Or it might be the other way around. Who knows? Maybe we were getting stitched up in London, probably. But then you – then so if you've got 600 parts per million of salts and you're, you've done your maths on how many plants you've got, <laughs> cucumbers – and, and how much water's in the tank. And then it says, so you need to make sure you've got 2,000 parts per million. And you just do it like that. And then you can... Oh, look, she's showing us the actual... That's far more interesting than conductivity meters. Have a little walk around. <laughs> okay. What's that thing there? That's What's that right there? It's a bunny rabbit. It's a floppy, floppy head bunny. Yeah. His actual... name's Little Cute, Little Cutie. Jack, would you, eat that? would you eat that? Would you eat that, Jack? Oh, I don't know what to do. Are you going to yeah. eat that, Dawn? No, not this one, but we're going to get meat rabbits. And there's a meat chicken. Meat rabbits? You want to talk to Alan about meat? <laughs> That's Little Miss Red Pill there. Are you going to eat Little Miss Red Pill? No, that one's a meat rabbit. Um, <laughs> and <they're> be <laughs> these are egg-laying chickens. So we get four a day off these. Who are you again? No shit. Is that all year round? Um, they go off the lay a bit in winter, um, but you freeze the eggs that you collect throughout the year. So, can you grow yeah, eggs hydroponically? Wait, Dawn, could you put those <laughs> chickens in a hydroponic uh, uh, greenhouse? Like, you probably could, probably. could you? Because they'd think it was yeah. summer. Imagine, imagine telling your, your stoner mate, oi, come round, I've got one of those flexi tunnels, I've got nine, nine million watts of light in, I've got it all set up, he comes round waiting for the finest amnesia haze, comes in, there's a few chickens running around, you go, no, they're laying 20 eggs a day each. <laughs> they're trying to eat you. Are they, are they <laughs> males or females? Or do you have... <laughs> <laughs> <don't know>. Email. <laughs> <laughs> you crack me up. Yeah, the boys do, don't lay eggs, darling. So what? Do you have one boy to? Uh, no, on, we what? haven't got um, we haven't got a rooster yet. We're thinking of getting one. So, so why do they lay eggs if they haven't got a rooster? Are they not fertilized? Do we not no. eat fertilized? No, they're eggs? not. Bloody hell, Chris! You need to learn <laughs> some stuff. Read a read a book. I don't, I don't know, know a lot about very little, <laughs> but everything else I've got a fucking clue. Oh, look. Hey, lay eggs. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <the meat. laughs> no, he, he, he steals them. He steals the eggs. I know Danger. he loves yeah. me, though. Look at that. Uh, is, he, is, is that a dog or a bitch? There you go. I know that. That's uh, a dog. No, yeah, he seems to Jojo. be caged off from the other animals. Is that because he rags them? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, he can't play with the chickens and the rabbits. He licks his lips a bit too much. Oh, my God. <laughs> they do, they like dogs, don't they? they? They lick a lot. They, it's not very nice. I mean, my nan's dog used to sit there and have one leg up in the air and it would do it for hours. And my nan just pretended it weren't happening. And my brother oh, used gosh. to sit there going... Nan, why is a dog licking its ass? And Nan would be going, turn the telly over. Come on, turn the telly over. And go, well, no, why is a dog licking its ass? What do you boys want for dinner then? She would not acknowledge that her um, pride and joy spent the whole day rimming itself. <laughs> what's in there, Dawn? Oh. Hey? Um, what's in there? Packer had a guess, look. Oh, what's in there? That's uh, a, a feed, feed station. 
and watering station. So I put liquid fertiliser in there or worm weed. So we've got a worm farm as well. And then it distributes through the garden bed so I don't have to water everything by hand. See, so, look how clever Master nice Benny. And he's put all the watering system in for them all. Jack, what do you make of all all this? Do you like all this stuff? It's quite impressive. Isn't oh, I love it? it. I love it. I find it so wholesome. I wish I had the means to do something like that. I just don't, you know. But uh, I love it. I love what Dawn does. I'd love to do something like that. I'm, I'm driving out in the country. I'm, I'm in a beautiful country all day. I'm driving through farmland with ancient stone walls. I take it all in. It's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Uh, oh. Jack, when you say you don't have the means, do you mean time, money, or both? Both. Absolutely, one hundred percent both. Yeah, because my time is yeah. taken up by earning money, and paying my bills. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, uh, maybe one day, who knows? Maybe who knows? one day, but, Jack, you could be a lady of leisure like Dawn. I mean, I, I'm already, I'm already dressed for the part. I already look like the missing dingle brother. So. <laughs> Dawn, I bet I, I said that as a joke. I bet it's quite hard work keeping all that going, though, isn't it? In fairness, well, it's, job. it's not. It's not too. It's not too bad, but I, I just it, it's you know it's what you enjoy. I'm Absolutely just looking love at your it. lovely life. Look at your look at your pad and all your things, and it's amazing. Yeah. These are beautiful green back there, broad beans. Oh, yeah. I don't like them though. My mother used to grow them. I don't like them. Yeah, well, that's what my mum said because um, her granddad used to grow them. Have and they got like, a special way? Is that a they got bean? ones in them? Hey, look, whatever floats your boat. Sorry, I, I go on, um, Jack. I interrupted you <laughs> twice. Then I was just saying, is, it, is that is that like a runner bean? My old man used to grow them with little red flowers, like the canes. Uh, these ones get like black and white flowers, very, very pretty flowers. And as you can see, there's none on yet, so they're about to go to sleep for the summer. Um, yeah. So the old man was always going off summer. about the green flies, trying to get rid of the green flies. <laughs> That's <laughs> that, it. Yeah, yeah. It, that just was be... a thing in, eight, in 80s England, wouldn't it, Jack? Green flies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you couldn't yeah. see the plant. It was just, you know, pulsating with other life. It's horrible. And then, and then, the, like, odd, and then the odd summer day where you'd have them all on your forearm, like you just. Do you, for like do you remember day. the um? Do you remember the like the, the, when the flying ants would come out once a year? Yeah. <laughs> and it would just be a haze of oh, everywhere, and like people would say, "Oh, they come out on the hottest day of the year." And I'm like, "How do they know?" <laughs> Do you remember all the old ladies pouring boiling water down the ants' nests? Oh yeah, <laughs> that was brutal, wasn't it? Yeah. Brutal. <laughs> Yeah, my old man yeah, used to do I'd it. Be, I'd do that. Yeah. What a thing to do. But I suppose you have, have you ever to. had an infestation wherever you've lived? Like, where you come into the kitchen and like marching in little lights? Well, yeah, <laughs> like, or, you know, or, there's a little bit of sugar spilt and they're all they're on it. Like, oh, no, in, in Cambodia, if you don't look after your ants, they, they, they take over. I mean, I had wow. to get some boric acid and I, I had. A meat dish, a sugar dish, and something else. And I'll put little ramps on them because you have to – different ants like different foods. Right. And I, once I established what kind of ants they were and what they liked, I then mixed up a load of boric acid with it. And this is how it works. They love it. They love that stuff. It gets stuck on their legs, all over their bodies. They, they, they take it in. But the, what ants do, the workers, they don't eat it. They take it back to the nest. They vomit it. I think they vomit it. They might actually shit it, but they get it out of them, and it gets fed to the the, the sort of the, the bourgeoisie of the ants, we could say. And they also give it to the queen. But a week later, they're all dead. So that's a really good way because you kill off the nests. If you don't kill the nests, they'll just keep. You know, they breed like ants, literally. You know. That just makes you wonder how, um, like that ant, the evolution of that ant, how it got to. What it does, eating something, going back, you know, the process. How did that all come about? It didn't just happen like that, did it? They had to sort of work it out, right? It's mad. It and that's, is, just it, an, on a, that's just on an ant level. That's just on an insect level. I like the way you said that's just on an ant level, like it was a unit of measurement. Yeah. You know, that's just that's an ant, ant level. <laughs> Packer, well, was use, your... Sorry, Jack, go on. I use Jaws as a... Jaws is twenty five foot long, so if I see if I see something like I've got a, 
approximate. So, oh, that's four jaws in. So I know that's hundred foot. <laughs> okay, so two, London <laughs> Buff is about two jaws. You got it. What's an ant like? Four mil, three mil? Um, I'd go. I'd round it up to five. Would you ever have two oh, no, jaws just... and three ants if you had to get specific? Hey, two jaws like, and three ants. Your ants. <laughs> Are nothing like our ants. Our ants, little black ants or red ants, tiny little things, aren't they? But over, over where you are, they're, you know, they've got tattoos and stuff. <laughs> I tell you what, the, the worst ones out here, you can barely see, and they, when they bite you, you go, oh fuck, you know, you actually feel them. And and they, I've looked at it on the internet, they don't get anything out of it. It's just, they just like doing it. They just, yeah. Is it, is it not? It's not even for defence, is it? You haven't no. you haven't sat on it. It just comes out and nips you. And I'll tell you what: when you get them, you know that horrible bit neck between your ball sack and your top of your thigh. They seem to like it in there. And when I call they... that the uh, I call it's that the separation of church and state. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Packer, you got to go some to beat that. What do you call it? It's a boobo. A tank. Oh right. What is it, Packer, sorry? No, the taint's the other way. Right, okay. Yeah. I've always known it as a separation of church and state. No, that's excellent. I've never <laughs> heard that. Yeah, that's amazing. Packer, did you have a country upbringing or a city upbringing? <laughs> half and half. I grew up in Ilford till I was 11, and then my parents moved me to the deepest, darkest flatlands of Lincolnshire. Is Ilford the one that's got the duck pond roundabout? No. Nah. No, that's Oxford, I think. There's a famous roundabout. Oh, East London, Essex. Yeah, no, that might be actually. Let me put Ilford, Ilford Duck Pond roundabout. Yeah, I've got pictures of it in Ilford. At least you, as a, you didn't even get let out of your house, did you? Bucker Steel. Have you heard of Bucker Steel? No. Yeah, our Greater London Ilford. There's a duck pond roundabout. I'm looking at pictures of it now. <coughs> Weren't my, were my bit of Ilford. No. <laughs> Packer doesn't, doesn't know his own area. Go on. Oh, on. No, he let himself well down, didn't he? Oh, actually, <laughs> it's in Oxford. Fuck her still. It's near Ilford, but, you know, near, oh. near down that neck of the woods. Could be anywhere. Dawn. Yes. What's happened? Hello, Skin and Tonic. He's, Skin and Tonic says, what I'm talking about is near Sneersbrook. Mouse Cat knows Bucker still. It's not near Ilford. Pax Max says, Gooch. Uh, <laughs> Ludwig's moving in on Linda. <laughs> and oh, uh, beautiful, Charlie, Linda. like a lady, has said, that was so lovely to see. Thank you for showing us around, Dawn. And it was. Oh, not a problem. It was lovely. Pleasure. Absolutely amazing. John Palmer says Ilford Island, he's talking about the duck pond, I imagine, was amazing for raids in the 90s. <laughs> John Citizen knows uh, Maslin nudist beaches. Where is that? I don't know. I'm, I'm getting confused. No, Guildford's uh, the other side of London. That's down Sur Surrey, isn't it? Guildford's. Yeah, sorry, Guildford, yeah. Yeah, Dan. Oh, there used to be a Guildford festival. Ever go to that, Jack? Rubbish. Nah, I've been, my brother lived near Guildford. Um, he used to um, actually, uh, he was a policeman around that sort of area. But um, it's not bad, Guildford. It's, I, what I like about it is they haven't like put one of these, oh, they, pop, they might have now, I don't know. But when I last went there, they haven't put one of these vapid malls that just ends up empty. And they put the 3D bloody posters up to make it look like it's a shop have you seen that oh no that sounds terrifying oh these malls are horrible they're sterile places there's no feeling to them but guildford's still got a lovely high street you can go down these little nooks and these little okay. record shops and stuff like that i don't know if it's still like that but um that's what i used to no. like about it, it had a, no, a, 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 a what's this piper real mall you talk of me yeah no one else mentioned it you know what like you said, <laughs> what did I say? It's amazing. <laughs> Who am I? What did I say? You said that there was a mall where they have like a screen or something. Yeah, right. Okay. So, Basingstoke, my hometown, right? 
uh, in the 2000s. I can't remember exactly what year. I, I can't remember to look up. They built festival places. So they knocked down the old granite 60s town. Do you remember them places? With all yeah, the underground parking. They yeah. got grotty. You'd have all the baggage. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. down the little spiral staircases. Always stunk to this. They got rid of, <laughs> you got rid of that. But you remember all that, right? It's, it's, well, that was just like famous. Darfur's yeah. got loads of those old granite and flint. Uh, little yes. sort of all that, yeah. yeah. So they got rid of that and they built Festival Place. When it first opened, there was a big hurrah. You had PHS one end, Devonham's one end. They're gone. <laughs> There's no one who came and opened it. Someone like yeah, that. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember who opened it. I can't remember who opened it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have been anyone fucking special. With the face so, I don't know. Maybe the guy. Maybe the guy from Status Quo or something. <laughs> Jack London, did you get on the Evo when you were a young man? The Evo, the glue. No, nah, no, nah, I know. Tipex dinners. <laughs> yeah, we used to cool. put it on our tie and just sit that's there it, that's it. And we put it on, 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 our, on the blazer of the cuff and just go. And then, and then, and then quickly they were like, That's outlawed, <laughs> you can't have this in class anymore. But we used to bring poppers in as well. Oh, Jesus. We, 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 poppers, that, my gosh, that takes me back. I or remember to all the gay clubs in London. That's it, that's it. Oh, heaven on the Charing Cross. Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, uh, you ever go to the Channel Club and that in Vauxhall? I did not. I, I, I'm not going to Vauxhall, mate. I mean, I'll do heaven at a push, but nah. Oh, it's, it's 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 rough there. The club, right? It's it was oh, so no, weird. We're having go... a lovely time, but it's not a bit of me, you know. <laughs> we, we used to go. We used to go to this club in Vauxhall. I think it was called Fire or something. But right next door was this gay fucking sauna called Chariots. And you there just you like, go. yeah, you know, people going in, slinging the towels over the shoulder and stuff. I don't want to go through the long yeah. door, man. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous, though. They, they, they know how to have fun, those boys. Oh, they love I mean, their D-R-U-G-S. They love them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But sometimes... If you, want, if you, know, have, if you sometimes, ever want to score, go and, find, go and find them. It's a bit far to go, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just saying, if, you, if, you, if you're, you're desperate. <laughs> now, my days of desperation for scoring. I know what you're saying, though. Um, but well, I do I'm, remember um... the Kit Kat Club under Charing Cross. Mm. That was when I see the nun. I've told the story too many times. I won't tell it again, but changed me. It did. I was only like 15, and I shouldn't have been in there. You had to wear an item of leather, so I had my dad's old motorbike trousers on. It was really weird. And it was, yeah, we've got zipper. It's Barclay. But um, I, there was, like, leather nuns and PVC maids, and they all going around. And, you know, I was just a kid, and so they started looking after me. But, you know, when you're... I, I used like, to, like... Because I, I was a because I was a DJ in that, I used oh, to get all, like, DJ mag, music mag, mix mag, and all that. We always have to have reviews from these clubs in London. I'm like, where are these places? Like, there's a place called House of Pain and Torture Gardens. <laughs> yeah, you remember yeah. all that stuff? Oh, torture Gardens. Like, who's yeah. going to that? Yeah. People do. No. <laughs> all of these clubs in London. Look at Barkley's loud voice. He boomed over the lot of us. Hello, mate. You all right? Nothing wrong with it. How are you, man? I'll turn my mic down. His voice has um, finally dropped. Awesome. <laughs> so, 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 so I've been keeping up all the call in streams. Which is basically like my reserve time slot on Chris's channel at this point. Um, I, I was you in ain't got long left because it's half five in the morning and I've got to go to bed. So this is your time, it's your moment. Make it count. Well, I was going to tell a story. Love I, I you, Bob. Clubs and like you love. Oh, I love you too. Assume that's what you said. <laughs> I, I saw this um, New Year's 2022. You know, going on to 22. Um, I'll stay in, at my friend's house in Nine Elms, London, or what nights happen. I've just muted him for the important bit. Uh, yeah, so you know, one bedroom flat, about six of us, me and my mates illegally sleeping in a double of the other rooms. Landlord walked in, crazy stuff, but that's not important. As we're waiting for our mate to get out of work, he lives in a, or he works in Soho, nice little grill house there, used to. Bodine's, do you know it? Well, yeah, yeah, it's not called Bodine's, but yeah. Yeah, well, whatever it's called. And we're just waiting around the corner, we saw that there's this... Um, sort of gym place. I think it was called Sweatbox. Do you know that one, Chris? I'm sure you're well yeah, aware of it. Yeah. yeah. yeah probably one of your favourites. It it's actually called that. I think they just called it that. 
Uh, yeah, the sign outside saying sweat box. I think um, I, 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 not my cup of tea, but yeah, go on. Are you sure? Uh, but yeah, so we were sitting outside. We were like, what the fuck is this sweat box place? Because we were trying to figure out, is this actually a sauna? Or is it just something a little bit like gayer? And as we were sitting outside, um, someone comes and talks to us. We start talking to him about COVID or something like that. He seemed quite like a base guy. And, um, you know, he was like, he was like, nah, I'm not getting no fucking vaccine, mate. None of that. And then next thing you know, um, you know, I asked, I was like, you know, what's going on with this sweat box place? He's like, oh, well, it's 15% gym, 5% sauna, and then 80% dark rooms for men to fuck each other in. Yeah. Ugh. He was like, hey, I was, I'm about to go in there. I was like, I'm only worried about getting AIDS or something. He's like, nah, mate, nah, I've got prep. It's like, fucking hell. They've invented something that can prevent people from getting AIDS, which will now like, promote promiscuity even more. And Big Farm is going to make a killing off of it. All well, works oh, out, God. doesn't it? All right, the old guys. I was quite envious of them because I'd be sitting down at Bar Italia or something with a gay and. Like they'd be on grinder, and it's like a Tuesday morning. Now, if I want to fuck, I've got to go and pay some brass. Like, and they're that <laughs> cheap in Soho. It, well, the cheap ones are, but you you soon find out why. And like, so for anything worth doing, I'm looking at at least hundred pound. Whereas they're there, grinder tells you where the, how far away they are, and he's literally go look. He goes, "What one do you reckon it is?" I mean, what do you mean? He says, "Well, it says here he's six meters away." So we're both sort of looking, <laughs> <laughs> and then we look across the road, and there's this bloke in like a leather waistcoat, and he went, oh. and then my mate, he just got up, he went, he went, how long are you gonna be here? I went, I'll have a couple of cups. So he said, I'll be back in twenty. Just fucked off with this bloke, and he was back in twenty. His hair was a bit messy. He went, that <laughs> that's it. And I just thought, isn't it? You know, when you've got both sides of the when they're both predatory, you 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 just just sort it, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's not men chasing women; it's just blokes fucking each other because they want to. And I mean, I'm not, I don't do that, but you can understand he was doing it three or four times a day. So was I, but I was down four hundred quid, and I had to go for all that palaver of having a pretend massage, and you know, and. And it's potluck as well. You don't know who you're getting. Sometimes you turn around and it's old fucking Susie Wong. <laughs> 1974. Susie, that's not their real name. <laughs> oh, uh, but, God. But, but you didn't I mean, go it, into it sweat exactly promote a, um, a, a good lifestyle, one of rapid sex. I mean, getting that, well, I mean, you're, you're going to disagree with us. I'm sure you loved it, Chris. But getting that rapid dopamine hit, like any time you want, and also getting incontinence at the same time. And microtensing whoa, 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 whoa. getting your root chakra destroyed that doesn't sound very good and Buddhist. Are you hang on? Are you talking about it's chakra to me? I think uh, I think there's something a little bit worse about constantly <laughs> having uh, gay anal promiscuous sex, or maybe shagging a woman, or you know, getting a massage. There's at least health benefits to getting a massage. Not well, you think you though. think it's bad for, when people have sex? You think that's not a good? You thing? know that's not what I'm saying. You know that's not what I'm saying. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I was only going on the bit where you said people having loads of sex isn't good. Uh, you tell him It's probably, it's probably love, not. It's love probably and not good love. for the brain. It's not probably not the best for the brain if you're having sex with constantly different people. It's probably not the best for the pair bonding skills. But then there's an extra um, element yeah, to it with one, homosexual one, one, sex. It's probably whoa, whoa, whoa. extra bad for the root chakra, which is my little sense. Well, of what stop knowing you. Just saying the asshole, basically. That's my. What's the root temple. chakra? Here we go. What do you mean? Here we go. I'll cut your mic off. Hold tight. Um, Packer, what's the root chakra? He's either. T- I think he's talking about your arsehole. Is that? Is it? What? Do you know that though? Have you heard of the root chakra? No, I've You're never heard it called that. Jack London, what's the root chakra? I don't know what a root chakra is. I know all about right. this so stuff and chakras and stuff, but I, I don't subscribe to it personally. No, I used to have a bollocks, but he's young. So go on, I'm, I'm, just, I, I'm not being serious when I say the root chakra. I'm just using it as a <laughs> more polite way of saying asshole to try not get you demonetized. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Oh, well, you don't. Hang on, you can. <laughs> I won. Packer was in a competition <laughs> with himself. But it, 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 it is in your lower, lower abdomen. 
Now, Dawn, you don't go for all that chakra nonsense, do you? Oh, I do a little bit. Have you got crystals in your house and that that you wash your spirit with as well? <laughs> not quite, but, but yes, I do. You I've said not quite. Crystals, you said not quite. You I've got some crystals being synthesised in my loft right now. Yeah. You're growing crystals. You put them out on a full moon. You're growing. What are you growing them for? Keep your root chakra clean. Yeah. <laughs> Can you grow them in your root chakra? <laughs> Yeah. Put, put, a spe do? put a speculum in, keep it open, and then you can grow all sorts in there. You know what, I am, yeah, like Barkley, all like this. I'll, I'll, I'll refer to it as the root chakra. I got nicked once, and they get you in, and uh, they wanted to do a full, a full cavity search because of my previous. And I said, Ooh. I said, I said, well, you, I said, I've got no rights here. You reckon you've got reasonable suspicion. So go on, spread me open, have a look up my ass. I know you like it. And like, there's five <laughs> coppers there. They bring in the doctor and they, they literally have you star shaped on this table. And uh, he puts a speculum. If anyone, done, all the women here will know what that is, but uh, I imagine a few of the men won't. It's basically a long metal tube well. with a winder that opens the tube. He stuck it right up my root chakra, and then he started <laughs> going, e -e -e. and I tell you what, I've turned around, there's four old Bill, like, leaning, all thinking, e what, what, what's the interest here? But what? What? You just want to have a look at my ass. Once he's got my ass open, it felt like about that big, he's got this stick, and he's sticking it up there, and he went, he went, yep. Yeah. He went, we got something. And then he's, I'm, I'm watching him. I'm just thinking, what the, I'm not, there's nothing there, by the way. I'm a junkie. I shit about once a year. And, <laughs> and I'm thinking, if you can get that out, mate, you'll be doing me a favor. <laughs> he's, <you>. got, <laughs> he's got these clippers on it and he's gone, yeah. And then he went, oh, uh, sorry, it's just compounded excreta. <laughs> I said, well, take it out. I said, yeah, I'll, get, I'll try and help. And I started straining. And he went, don't do that. Don't do that. And I can pull the and like, coming out. Said, can you stop doing that, sir? <laughs> Compacted it. Did, did you say thank you, though, Chris? Did you say thank you? I, I asked him if he had a wet wipe because he, you know. It, did you take your socks off? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually. <laughs> There's something awful about a man with nothing on but his socks, isn't there? Oh, gross. Oh, there's something awful about having a spectrum up your speculum up your root shot. I think the best thing to do in that situation is like, really sick. Ooh, can you do that again? Bar Take Barclay. it out and put it in again. <laughs> Mark, it's a serious question, though. What do you not do? You not think what? What are your? What's your? You, you seem to have an angle here on on people having sex and having a lot of it. Um, well, I've gone through periods where I've had a lot of sex, but it was in relationships, not to brag. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's 12. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> a lot of sex, his right, voice you... is broken. All right, leave him alone. Yeah, <laughs> he can on. take it. That's why he comes on. <laughs> So uh, every time going on with Chris, like yeah, it's just a brutal beating every single Wait, time. I talk to you like I talk to everyone. That's how it works. Because I nah, you. you you treat you treat me extra rough. That's, that's what oh, I you, look, you, look, he wants me to tickle his fucking root shark the way he's talking. <laughs> yeah, that was a fantasy. Well, like, like um, you were saying earlier, it's free between men, but I'd have to pay a woman like four hundred quid for that. For the amount of time I'd want. Tell me your take on sexuality. Please. That's a extremely broad question. Um, well, no, but what I, you were talking stick on the, about. You, you right, seem to say there was something wrong wrong with it. You seemed against it. And then you said you had loads of it as well. What I said was wrong was I think the idea of having um sort of sex with several partners is not going to be good for your brain. And when it comes to things like pair bonding, you know, it is going to be harder for people to settle down. There is just a direct correlation science buzzword blah 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 right very widely known thing the more sexual partners someone's had the more likely they are for divorce uh among other things john you makes me least like, go on. do you think that works for men 
I, I get what you're saying with women. I've, but yeah, with, with men, it's less severe. Like men, I think men as well, we're a lot more um, pragmatic and practical. I think if I yeah. didn't love a woman that much, um, but I was like, okay, she'd be a really suitable mother for my kids and we still go on quite well, I think I could pull that off for like, instead of like trying to bin her off to find like some, you know, new crazy romance. Um, but yeah, I think men can definitely get away with a lot more promiscuity than women can from a mental perspective. What, you think it actually sends them mad or something? It, I think it definitely affects their ability to fall in love and form genuine bonds yeah, and but connections. I, okay, let me put this to you. When I was growing up, like, you know, went through puberty, I went through puberty very late, but those, Can like, late teen years and early 20s at art school and that, everyone was fucking all the time, men and women. You know, and men yeah. and men, and women and women, people were fucking because that's what young people do a lot of at that age. And then they grow up a little bit, and in their thirties, they pair off and get married and have kids. I don't. It seems a bit weird that it seems like like some kind of weird Victorian prudish approach to sex. No, don't. Oh, I'm just sex. glad there was no social media back in those days. That's all I can say. Ah uh, no, but, but chat seems to be in support of me here. But yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, of course, young young people in a society where they are less guided, like, you know, you, you wouldn't see that little promiscuity in a Islamic culture, a heavily Christian culture, a sort of more atheistic society. Or yeah, but a, if you look at Islamic cultures, they're fucked, aren't they? Uh, they have very strong families. They have strong discipline, and their children wind up hard working. I think a lot of ways of doing a lot better than it's we terrible have. Terrible economies and. And always at war with their own religions. Right, yeah. but they, they, but they can't run a family though. They can't run a country, but they can run a family. Yeah, there you go. I mean, as well, some and of their countries seem to be at least a bit better. But at least their countries are uh, monocultural. You know, that's one benefit, or to a degree, they are. And at least what, they're fucking Robert? honest. Um, Mon- Bart, yeah, are you going to convert to Islam? Uh, well, I've been watching this Andrew Tate guy recently. I think he's talking a lot of sense. <gasps> no! <laughs> no I'm I'm you died for God's sake. I, I've, I've actually, oh, that's a I've troll. Actually, that's a troll. I've, I've actually got like the most <sighs> next level take on Andrew Tate. But um, no, I've not heard anyone point this out about him. He made his money. He made his first million by you know having this sort of cam whore harem. And what he would do is, you know, when he had some desperate like cash cow bloke messaging one of his um women he would pretend to be the woman on the other side like sort of doing like sexual role play with the guy pretending to be this woman to get him off to get this bloke off so he'd give him money that is doing gay role play sex via text message for money and personally i did it for free and i actually am quite jealous he got it for money so yeah that's my point about him to be honest he come out with a really... I saw a funny question he asked the other day, and this Christmas is kind of connected. Concern. His question was, would you rather have sex with Hulk Hogan if Hulk Hogan had a vi- vagina and was biologically a woman, or have sex with <laughs> Megan Fox if Megan Fox had a penis and was biologically a man? Oh, what a quandary. Mm. What, what, what's you what been feels thinking? less gay? Jack, what's your take on that? If you've got to decide oh, now... The clock's ticking, mate. You've got 10 seconds. No, it's a bit like the mermaid thing, isn't it? Would you rather have a human top half and a fish bottom or a big fish head with a giant face? <laughs> <laughs> the big <laughs> fish top is such an image with, like, human legs. Amazing. If you're having sex with Hulk Hogan, right, there's no, there's nothing you can do which doesn't make it just look like you're fucking a bloke. But at least if it's, like, if you're behind Megan Fox with a penis... Like it's still going to sound like Megan Fox, it's still going to moan like Megan Fox, and you won't be able to see the penis. But if you put your hands around, you can just pretend hey, you went all the way through. But, but it is going to be, it is going to be root sh- chakra, isn't it? Exactly. That's the chakra. trouble you got there, Bartley. <laughs> Are we giving it some energy? You we crazy went full, we, we went full circle. You've fallen into your own oh my addiction. Don't crap. In this hypothetical, yeah. <laughs> You said um, that twice now. Years ago, a mate of mine went on a pilot show for a, like a TV thing that you know they get people who ain't famous on to do them, and if they they film them, and if the producers think it's got legs, they get real celebrities on to do it. And it was called Would You Rather. And Graham Norton was the host, 
and so that was it really it was would you rather and then it was put to the guests and the the one that i remember was um and it was this was said to a bloke would you rather oh i can't remember her name who's the latin singer who was really hot when she was at her peak J-Lo? really famous J-Lo. yeah J-Lo. jennifer lopez yeah would you rather uh, and I, I like this because I like what it says about culture and sexuality. Would you rather have sex with Jennifer Lopez, but no one ever know about it, or not have sex with her, but the whole world thinks you did? <laughs> Option one. Option one. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Stay away. You, you, I don't you care what people think about me. Shows. <laughs> 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 you <don't> look. <laughs> so right. option two, then. I look like I could be a labourer on Dawn's farm. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm pulling cabbage out today, so there's, there's a spare bed if you want one. I really love a new farm, Dawn. It sounds like a better life than what I have. Barkley, what oh. so sad. You've got it all ahead of you, mate. I'll tell you, everyone else in this stream would ju- chop their arm off to be your age. Yeah. yeah, but if, yeah. I, I, I'm not exactly living with the nicest Get your ass over here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, don't worry. 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 Don't I'll tell you what, Barkley, this is a true thing. And I know that everyone else will agree. Like, we're all, I mean, I'm 50. I don't know the exact ages of the others. But I was 18 like that. Just yesterday, I was 18. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, that went I didn't know. quick. Where did that go? <laughs> so, you mean 14? Oh, I don't know. That's, that's a curveball. Isn't Barkley still 14? <laughs> so, 14 she's, next year. Digging you out. <laughs> you out. See? See? You big turn big 14 year older. Ah, it's weird, oh, man. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Look, you're 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 about to enter your twenties. Your twenties are just madness. You don't know who you are, what you're doing, your brain's still developing, the world thinks you're an adult, you're not, and and you just think it's all gonna go wrong. And then but don't don't make it worse by not fucking people because that's the only thing that's going to get you through. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a life I was in a life space with Sam Ugog, uh on Saturday night, and we were talking to a chap who was in his twenties, and the same thing. And we were trying to give him advice, and his comeback all the time was, "Yes, but you're old. Yes, but you're old." Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, when I was 18, I honestly thought I knew everything. I just thought, you can't give me advice, Mm. you know, you're just a stupid old bloke. And even even a low IQ person who hasn't had what you'd call a lot of experiences has lived a life. Mm. And until you've done that, you cannot understand the journeys that they've been on. Even just a very normal life is a it's such a vast a wealth of experience it's um and i you know i'm not i'm, I'm not judging you barkley I, I was pretty much the same i no, thought I, got no, I do um I, I do listen to people who are like older than me i do actually try i try to like absorb the wisdom and uh, i try to learn from mistakes other people have already made and i've always taken that mindset of um listen to people who you know i respect to but if it's like someone who's older than me he's like just sort of gone down a path of life that's I don't really consider um admirable or I think they're a bad person. I won't really take their advice as seriously. But you know, I I, I Yeah, but I, I know I know nothing. I have been I, down a good path, have I? I've had an awful yeah, but I, I, life. I think you've wound up as a uh, very respectable and like funny moral person. I think that you uh, yeah. you do a lot of good for people. You've well you've gotten people off of their addictions. You've been very transparent with um, your degeneracy and it's probably you know, maybe slightly put me off doing things you I think, probably would have done anyway. It's a cautionary tale, isn't it? Danger field, a cautionary tale. Yeah, and you, you know, you know, you've done me a lot of good, Chris. You know, you know who I had a meeting with today. 
I think you need to take risks, though. I think, I think there is a risk of but unprotected buggery on grinder. That's a good risk. No, but I don't, you know, you're, you're not a gay, but. I didn't mention anything about unprotected, and a lot of the gays Jerry I knew, they I didn't know. go. A lot of the gays I knew, they didn't have intercourse because it's not very good. The female vagina is made for penile penetration, and it massages it. Root well, chakra does it. feel quite nice, though. No, it's no, it's just it's one. Rare tree, but... It's like having a wank with like just a thing finger and a thumb, and they, you know they don't really get into it. Oh a lot yeah, because you're bagging prostitutes that don't load at times. The, vel the velvet line sausage wallet. <laughs> I, I don't like anal sex. I mean, I tried it a couple of times, and just because of that, it's just it's more psychological, isn't it? Is this bird filthy that yeah. she can let me do it? And then when she does, you're like, eh, actually, it's a bit. Can we just have yeah. a bath and get back you, to the normal? You've got a father. Thing? You've got a father. What would he think about you doing this? It's like what would be going through my head. But you start moralizing sex. Yeah, it's really fun. Try to suck myself out of it. Yeah, but the reason most fathers worry about... I was virgin when I daughter, first went on this channel. How weird is that? Sorry, go The on. reason most fathers worry about their daughters is because they know what men are like because they've yeah. done it. <laughs> That's yeah. what it is. It's not like, oh, there's some dangerous men out there. They're like, there's blokes like me out there. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's it's like, like, people, people, it was in the vicinity. People, I'm going to go... There's un, I'm going to check entropy because blogs is here. And he has left some. I'm just going to refresh it. I'm going to, if you want to drop a super chat, people do it now. And then we're going to have uh, final words. Um, let me just check entropy. Uh, blog says, you gave a girlfriend a penile wart on her bum. Well, it's not a penile wart if it's her <laughs> bum, is it? It's a you were wart. bare back in there with a genital wart. Well, I was, you know, making a joke. You know you could have gave her cunt cancer, don't you? <laughs> was it persistent HPV 16 stroke 18 shame? Guilt? I've never heard really called that. I didn't have it. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Did you give a girl a pause load, Chris? That's vile. He gave me $3 for that. That's a, that's a 20 quid fucking comment all day long. And then there's another one. Titanomiyama Lube. Some queens reaching up to seven centimeters, 2.8 inches in length, and having wingspans of up to 6.3 inches. Anthropogenic That's climate change, of course, more O2. So there you go. And then he's another one from Bill. Cheers, Bill. Cheers, Bill. I'm only breaking your wall infested balls. He says, if you get HIV, I think you should retire from gay gangbangs, brackets, hetero too. This is too gay. HIV does not magically disappear in the air. Mad bastard. You were just lucky. What do you mean I was just lucky? What, well, eh? I wasn't. <laughs> I, I, think Chris, I think Chris has had more experience being a junkie, so I'll take your word for it. You've had the experience. You've had the wisdom. You know what will and won't give you AIDS. Well, I don't, you know, you've got to actually share the blood. And anyway, it's a grotty thing. And oh. it's, uh, and fair, oh, Bill, I'll look into it and I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you with. Do junkies not have a lighter to like disinfect, not disinfect, like sterilize the needles with as well? No, you don't do all that shit, mate. You just find one on the ground and scratch it on the side of a matchbox. Um, oh, fucking hell. Yeah. Very well, <laughs> Right, um, we call him the niggler for a reason, and he never fails to let us down. Where are we? Anglo Saxon. So, Alan's was the last one we read, mate. Okay. Cheers out. Anglo, I'm going to play your tune, Anglo. Uh, it says, enjoyed the stream. Anglo says, Chris, I wish I was as politically switched on as Barclay, Barclay at his age. Him and his kind are our future. Yep, We're fucked if I'm the future. You got it right there, Anglo. Yeah. Sort of, sort of. Parker says, oh, thanks for having me. Look, he's right here and he says, thanks for having me. Look at that. Don Brown, he says, thanks for putting up with me. We know everyone on this stream has been wonderful. It's so lovely of you all to come on. It really is. It's, it's, uh, I'm going to say it. It's especially lovely to see Jack and Dawn because we haven't, I haven't seen the pair of you, certainly not on the stream for a long time. 
not you know Packer and Barkley and uh, uh, Abstract Steve and Dan Art and um, oh, remind me Packer. Forty two. There you go. Always lovely, but it's been a long time since I see you two. Ludwig's dropped an air and center in. Another quick call-in show lasting three hours. Yeah, it's 6 a.m. here. I've got to get up for work in about four hours. Three hours. Oh, Two hours. Um, lovely stuff. Cheers, Chris and guests. Scrub love to all. Hoyt to that, Ludwig. Absolutely lovely. Right, final words. Uh, Jack London, have you got anything you want to leave us with? Any words of inspiration, um, encouragement? Or well, just you know, you... Just quickly, you know um, my story. How I, I, I've been in Ulster now. It'll be like two years in May. And uh, oh, say that May, again. So sorry, mate. Say that again. I've been in Ulster in in May. I've been here two years. So I've been a year and a half. Wow. Um, That's yeah, it's gone quick. Boy, I remember gone quick, isn't it? And I've, 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 put, I've put roots down. I've got friends. I go out. Um, my my missus' eld eldest boy had a child, so I've become a by proxy granddad. So there's a baby around. I tell you what, people, I tell you what, I'm not going to go into the details because it's not my place. But I remember Jack telling me, I remember you went out there to see visit a friend. And then I remember him saying to me, no, I'm going to uproot and move out there. I love it out there. And look at that. Nearly two years later, he's done it. He's got roots. He's got friends. And it, you, you know what? People in life say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And many, most don't. And it, that's quite a big thing to do, move country. I've done it, you know, and I nearly left here. You know, I think that first month was very difficult. But well done, Jack. I'm glad it's worked out for you, man. Yeah, I'm sure Thank you've you. got um, a, a big love to everyone, all the scrubs. You're fantastic. Thanks for coming and seeing our stream. There she is. <laughs> and, um, love you, Jack. Yeah, and we'll be streaming on on Sunday. So, it's so a danger. No stream clucking. <laughs> I know you're good. Yeah, I'll right. be ragged nowadays just, just to check. Ludwig, did I thank you for that, Ten Arts? Thank you, mate. Um, okay. Um, blogs is... No, I did. I read all that. Um, Barclay, you got any final words or uh, words of wisdom? Anything yeah. you want to leave us with? Uh, yeah, I just think what he said uh, about wisdom, uh, the way I've sort of realised it, it's like when you start learning an instrument, you realise, as soon as you start learning, it's like, as soon as you really think you start getting good, you realise that you actually know fuck all about it, and that's how I see, like, wisdom in life. Um, exactly. Also, as much as I have just talked to game about, you know, not having, um, you know, loads of sex, I am still a 19-year-old, and I probably would shag a girl the moment it was ever conceivably possible. <laughs> but, like, I, I'm not, I'm not going to sit there and lie about it. I, 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 <laughs> You know, when I was on holiday in Czech Republic, I did get I did get on the business a little bit, but you know the business. Good oh boy, God, I did get on the business. <laughs> Dawn said, "Good boy." So, so you, what? So, you, uh, no, I'm not going to comment. That's your final words. Okay, that's fair enough. And uh, right, Dawn, you want to leave us with anything? Um, I mean, there's no pressure. It's just um, uh, no, no pressure. No, not, not at all. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, thank you, Chris, for bringing so many people together. I think that's a good start. Um, yeah. A lot of people have made some great connections and you've been really supportive of, of people as well, which is appreciated. I uh, hope everybody's checked out 42's new music video. We played it on it yesterday. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, did you? Oh, I missed out. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. bit dark, but yeah, no, it's very, very good. <laughs> I reckon, he's yeah, on the same. I reckon he's on the same with that. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, it's like a genre that could really take yeah. off and snowball. There you go. So I keep pushing it. I keep pushing it, that's for sure. And, yes, yeah, love, love to all you beautiful. Moi. <laughs> the classic. Uh, by the way, Dawn, or, or, you know, <laughs> I would actually love to come stay on your farm and work in Australia. I got, I got banned from woofing, Still which I was going to do. A bit much. Yeah. I'm just saying, I would you got banned to. from what, love? From woofing. Yeah, so fit, I don't sound, it's not dogging. It's a thing where you can go and volunteer on farms across the world. I got banned for that because yep. I wrote an article encouraging people to do it. And then some little lefty rat grasped me up. <sighs> Lost oh, out on a fuck. bird because of that. Yeah, tragic, isn't it? Um, I also yeah, no, if you can get out here, honest to God, you are absolutely more than welcome to stay with us. Mm. Um, yeah, we've got, we've got enough room. 
um, we've got a spare camper trailer. So just, just yeah, on no, the topic can't. of um, music okay. as well and taking off. Okay. What do you make of the old final word thing? It's gone a bit tits up, hasn't it? Like, <laughs> well, I, 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 now, aren't they? Six <laughs> o'clock in the morning. I, I just had, I did have one uh, cool little final thing. Um, uh, I found out today that my dad was almost signed with a major record label when he was a drummer in a band. I can't remember which one, but uh, yeah, he, no, it wasn't. He wasn't in the band Genesis, and it wasn't a record label Genesis either. Yes, okay, and then uh, they didn't do it because they were the Golden Ear, the person who was a music talent scout, said that they wanted to get rid of a singer. The singer said he was okay with being not the main singer, but he still wanted to do the writing so he could get the royalties. And then all the band members said no because we want you to stay as a singer because that would uh, you know destroy the um, credibility of the band, and we wouldn't be what we were if we got rid of you. And also, I haven't referenced oh. Genesis enough in this uh, stream, so. Uh... But now you have. <laughs> hey, I've had my picture in the Rolling Stone magazine, so you know. Come I've on. been on Channel Four. Take that. I'm, I'm sorry, people, but I really <laughs> didn't go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to shut up now. Love you all. Uh, no problem. It's been lovely to talk to you, Dawn, and you, Buckley, and you, Jack Packer. It's 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 uh, I'll, um, it's not, it's always a privilege. Uh, thanks for the donations. Thanks for everyone who come on as guests, and um, and thanks for everyone who comes in the chat because that's what makes the stream. We've had like ninety people, and weird time of day for a stream, and uh, it's always a privilege and an honour. Packer, final words with you, my friend. Just thanks for having us. It's been fun. The guests have been interesting. The topics have been varied. It went uh, where it normally goes. Marks out of ten. This one, oh, it's a nine and a half. It was a strong stream on, on the yeah, packometer. All right. Well, I'm going to put your comments on the screen. I've got a a, a little bit of music you'll recognise, but it's a it, well, I played it before, but it's a it's a it's another version. Barkley, Phil Marshall, Dawn Browning, quite to the pair of you. Look after yourselves, Packer. I'll talk to you soon. You've been a great co-host. Ta da, everyone. You know, Chris, you know, I always uh, <laughs> talk so much in your streams. You know, the solution is. I think that's the solution. Jesus Christ. It's not a fucking wind up bunny, isn't it? Kick him out for good. Um, see you later, Packer. Ta da. Ta da, mate. And we have reached the end, people. Well, here we go. Um, thanks to Steve and Rags for looking after the place. It's the funniest thing I say. I don't know if it needs looking after, but they always do it. Maybe it does need, maybe they do the most amazing job. That's why. It, there's no trouble here ever because they're the master moderators. I've kept to my word. I said if I can justify the time for a few quid here and there, I'll do it. And I have, and you've been very generous again tonight. I'll try and get another stream in over the next couple of days. Look after yourselves, people. Bless you all. Look after yourselves and those you love. Here's a bit of music. Let's hope I can get it sorted because they keep changing it. Right. What did he tell me? Entire Chrome tab. There you go. Here we go, people. I'll put your comments on the screen. Amazing. Ta-da. <laughs> One, two, three, four. I do apologise for interrupting, but poor old Billy Bloggs, he always puts an entropy in and I miss it. And he, it's happened so many times, I'm just going to read it out. And he, he stuck a fiver to it because I dug him out for the three quid. 
He said, I'm going to have to shoot. Oh, no, I'm going to have to shoot an info. I'm going to have, right, I'll, I'll, I'll correct the typos. I'm going to have to shoot a load of info at you about those viruses you miraculously avoided. Previous messages self-destructed like you are Inspector Gadget. I'll make you realise your luck. Fucking hell, it's a bit, bit much, isn't it? <laughs> Cheers, Bill. Back to the music. Let me know you can hear it, because it might have turned off, because I've done all that. Right, you're getting another song because I just remember that I let down my man Anglo there. So um, apologies, Anglo. I already had that one wrapped up. Now, if I can just remember how to find it. Here we go. Bosh, bosh, bosh. I can do another five minutes. That sounds like it, doesn't it? Here we go. I better take this to... My man, Anglo-Saxon, this is a bit of Bally G. And I'll tell you what, the Bally G, he's in a bit of trouble at the moment. So send him good waves, send him some positivity, not of the bum fanny chakra ver variety. I can't even talk. I'm so dead. I've been awake about a year. <laughs> you can hear it, can't you? I'll tell you what, you can smell it here and all. Here we go. Here you go, Anglo. Let me know you can hear it, people. Bosh. 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 If I press play. <laughs> Thank you. 
you'll be murdering someone's son. And you'll realize you've been so when you feel the enemy's cold heart steel. Cause the wheels are ready being rolled when you feel the enemy's cold heart steel. You'll realize you've been sold when you feel the enemy's cold heart steal. Hold on, cause the wheels are really being rolled when you feel the enemy's cold heart steal. Look at that, 10 past six in the morning. Good Lord, it's going to take me 10 minutes to floss my teeth. It's going to take me 20 minutes to rub some E45 down between the uh, division of church and state. <laughs> That's my takeaway from this stream. Never heard that one before, I loved it. Uh, people, it is uh, Black Friday week. It's the busiest week of my year, but... I think that's why I have been doing a lot of streams because I've been needing to. I've been needing them as well. I'm. I am also a scrub. Remember, um, it's been wonderful. You're all right, mate. I knew you were only joking, but I also did promise it. So you know, man and the words. I wouldn't want you to get all frustrato. <laughs> a little bit more italiato for you people. I've really got to go now, though. Look after yourselves. Hoita!